and there we should be live. Um, yeah, it looks like you have four people. In the, Make in the sure right you uh, mute your YouTube. My YouTube didn't start yet. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, mine didn't start yet either. But yeah, uh, if you don't mute your YouTube, then we'll get the echo. So anyone yeah. that's got YouTube and StreamYards open, just mute your YouTube once it comes on. That's it weird. It hasn't even up. started yet. It it says it's not started yet. It is now. Just oh, started. It is. Okay. Yeah, there so we go. I got mine muted. Yeah, I got mine muted too. Mind you. I got five people in there. Wow. All right. Four waiting. So what's happening? Happy anniversary. Shit. Happy anniversary is a horrible thing to say. And I watched the Sunrise yeah, Remembrance, and that's he true. That actually true. had the nerve to call it a celebration. And I'm like, seriously. What you see? Uh, choice words. It's. I think it's Carolyn Goodman. Um, did that. Um, <clears throat> some some survivor made a um, a uh, like a little tree, like a, a metal tree kind of you know statue thing, and um, of course Carolyn Goodman, the mayor, is over there, you know, unveiling it, and it's like you didn't make this thing, right? It's almost like why she don't took they let a survivor first... do it? She used yeah. to always lead, and I don't know if she did tonight, but she used to always lead a thing at the memorial gardens where she. It was a candlelight vigil where she'd read off the names. And I was like, why don't you let one of the parents or one of the survivors read off those names? And I'm not sure if they even did that tonight. I posted the sunrise thing, but it's like I didn't go through all the other things that were going on today because I got stuck down rabbit holes. Yeah, I mean, um, stuff. Yeah, good times. Yeah, the Vegas. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of like over it at this point. I mean, it's been five years. It's been five damn years. I think uh, the first two were pretty exciting there. But um, I'll never be over it. I'll dig probably till I'm dead. But being that I have I mean, lung cancer, that probably isn't that far down. The yeah, road. don't. Uh, I'm hoping I made the seventh or eighth anniversary. Don't say that. The um, it's like we're still we're glad you're still here. Jeez, yeah. I you was know? worried with that surgery when they took my lung. I was really scared then, but now that I've like gotten more recovered, it's like now it's just like okay, every three months I go get checked and wait, you know, for the time bomb to to tick. But yeah, I'm right. actually due next week on the eighth. I think I go for my next check. Oh, okay. So, so like, tell me if it's spread. So, so let me let me start by this, man. Let me let me ask you guys, like, uh, what got you guys into this? Like, what what makes you care about this? Because case? I was down the street and thought I was being attacked by terrorists. So, like, from the minute it happened is when I jumped in, being freaked out. Yeah, yeah, I, and yeah, I never I, believed. I, I, I that night when I was there. watching it and Lombardo at 1.30 in the morning stated one shooter all done and over with. And I'm still down the street scared shitless because I have to get on an airplane in the morning <laughs> thinking the city's being attacked by terrorists. When he said that at 1.30, that was when my total spidey senses went up. And I'm like, this needs to be looked into. So that's kind of how I basically yeah. got stuck in this or jumped in this and won't leave till I figure it out. Come on, some audio issues. Where's that coming from? Yeah, what is that? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was an away. Was, oh okay. I don't know. Everyone, everyone muted, so I don't. I don't know. It's, uh, it's my damn fan in the background. My bad. Oh okay, no problem. Um, well, I wasn't there, go ahead. but my a uh, few of my best friends were on the strip that night when it happened, and so that's kind of what drew me in. Uh, I have a friend who lives in Vegas, and my best friend from here in Ohio was out there visiting him. He had just flown in to McCarran. I don't know, like they got in at like eight thirty, and they just went over onto the strip and started partying when uh everything started and so i was at work that night and uh heard it all going down and i'm calling him on the phone like oh my god dude are you okay and he's like yeah we're locked down in a, in a casino and you know yeah i'm okay but i gotta save the charge on my phone you know so and that's what kind of what sent me down that track was the fact that he was there oh, okay so you knew people that were yeah in, in vegas what about you angela what get what got you into this hold on for a minute oh i think we lost audio on angela that's not possible. <laughs> I'm the only one that talks as much as her. Angela, something's I'm here. on you. Okay. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> I was muted because I was sharing this link with some of a uh, group of friends I hang out with. Um, oh, I should actually. So that they could come. Angelica. Oh, yeah. What, I, could, what, I could post it. So what's your story, Angela? What, 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 what got you involved in this? So originally. I was watching. Yep. Originally, I was watching the news. And I heard about this old man that was shooting out windows at a country western concert you know everybody running crazy and stuff like that um but it also had to do with a dream i had a dream then i saw the news then i started looking at it i can pull the dream up and i can read it to you tonight if you want um i mean i'm just i'm just curious like because it always always makes me wonder like why people get are involved in this mm mm-hmm So I thought it I just thought off the top of my head, that just sounds so weird. So I started Googling it to kind of like look more into what happened. 
and I landed on Let the Bodies Hit the Floor YouTube page. I knew you were going to bring him up. I oh, knew that I am. Be where we got you addicted. Ooh. You got That's me it. brought That was it. Just... I learned about And then they kicked me out of their chat because they thought I was a spy. Remember that way back Yes, then? you were a spy. Yes. <laughs> you got, she did. Yes. You got It was only out. a group of like five of us. We were in this private chat together. Yes. And all of a sudden I'm not in it anymore. And I think it was Angela that messaged me. She's like, well, they were talking in there and they think you're like, you know, like a spy. I always expected everyone to be in like FBI undercover yes. or whatever. She was a, yeah. Yes. I remember the spy <laughs> thing. Yes. That was like only like probably two or three months after the shooting. I thought that was hilarious. Yes. Well, and Diana X was some, they were, some people of my friends were trying to make me not like Diana. And X because they were like, you're being friends with a high military op CIA, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, yeah. I'm friends with her on awesome. Facebook. Like, it's a legit Facebook. It's German. It's she's real. I, I've seen she's her. A real person. Right. I've seen, I know she's got kids and a dog. They can be faked. I'm like, no, you guys. I voice message her. I can hear kids. I can hear the dog. She said, I used to have hangout chats with her and Miss Dawn. So it's like we talk for hours. So yeah, yeah it's like, she's a great lady. A and I'm friends person. with her today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I talked to you a few times. Yeah. So that is that is what got me looking at it. And I landed on YouTube. Was mm -hmm. a dream. I heard about this old man shooting at Vegas. Um, I also, at the time. You are a witch. Uh, yeah. yeah. I you had. Kind of premonition. A, I had a. Um, oh, we should not do tarot card readings. Huh? I do. Yeah. Oh, my God. About I loved 10. her. I do tarot. <laughs> but for myself. Um, for myself. For no, know. but he was talking about you know, the other card readings. We'll leave that to Fash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I miss Fash. Yeah. I loved her too, except her when she'd get on the politics. It was like You know her and I became friends. She's all right. Her and I became friends and met nice for lady. coffee. We met for coffee like two times oh, here wow. in my I town. She's in California somewhere. I know. She's in Monterey. Yeah. I'm in Watsonville. She's right here. Couldn't believe yeah. that shit. So I met her twice for coffee, maybe even three times. Talked to her numerous times on the telephone. And then all of a sudden, I was, I don't know what happened. She wouldn't reply to my text messages. She uh, she probably found out you were a Republican. She seriously, <laughs> like, cut me off like that. No explanation. No, you, you know. Well, she did tell me there were some text messages that were kind of weird. She and disappeared twice and then resurfaced. So there might have been some personal stuff going on. In she life. hides. What no. she does is she makes, and because I've caught her doing it, and what she used to do and get caught was type on in serves and type on tens. And she blows her new account every single time. Yeah. Cause you can tell her language. So once in a while I go check to see if there's some random, you know, to see if it's her. Mm. Um, but I know the she line. probably has a channel. She's a weirdo though. Like she I loved her channel, except I didn't like, I did too. Politics. But if you, if you know her, if you knew her personally, she's a weirdo. Like you can tell she's a weirdo. Yeah, you know she might see this. Yeah, that's fine. She's, that's okay. Yeah, whatever. We're, we're, yeah, we're just she's a weirdo. Okay, so uh, let's go around. Dan, 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 Dan. Yeah, you haven't said nothing. Um, what got you involved in this? Well, I mean, I saw it on the news, and I'm kind of a true crime junkie, so yeah, I started yeah. looking into it, and, and just seeing the videos and like hearing the gunshots. I mean, it, I really felt like it was not one shooter. Right. And you know, my my thoughts and perspective have evolved since then, but that's how it started. Now, did you watch the news or were you already on YouTube? Um, I mean, I had a, you know, I had YouTube, but I was very rarely on it. Um, I started looking, I watched the news that started looking up videos on YouTube. Okay. So, and got sucked in. Right. Yep. <laughs> Angelica is here. Do you want her to come on with the link? With oh, us? good. Yeah. I just sent yeah. her the link just for the chat, but. No, send it to her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. So She's Matt, great. Matt, what's up with you? Yes. Matt? How'd you get involved in this? Well, it's kind of weird, but um, <clears throat> there was somebody that I was on uh, Hangouts with, and he was doing a live stream, and I was at work one night, and I, I saw the notification, and so I clicked on it, and I was listening to this guy that I talked to, and uh, <clears throat> he, he just briefly mentioned the, the Vegas shooting, and he said that something doesn't seem right about it. He said he can't put his finger on it, but so like something just doesn't, you know, click. Yeah. And that had me thinking. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll check it out when I get home. Yeah. And after that, I got on uh, YouTube and started watching videos and like yeah, on it ever since. I got hooked on it. Yep. Just well, like I everybody mean, else um, did. I don't know. I think uh, I think I've told my story in parts. 
but I don't know if you guys want to hear it because it's long. Sure. I can slice mine down to a minute, and I'm a blabbermouth, so you can you can summarize. <laughs> no, it's it's tough, man, because you know, I know because you had the friends. Yeah, I have a lot of friends over there. I mean, you know, and and living in Southern California, you can't walk five feet without tripping over somebody. Know somebody that was there or, or something, right? You know, um, so I, you know, and of course, Paddock owned a bunch of property out here, which is you know, it's interesting. But the um, basically, you know, uh, when this all came about, I didn't find out about it until the morning after, but. The um, uh, basically when I was working, I was at work one day and, and some guy t- comes up and tells me I got to cover him because uh, he's going to a country concert in Vegas. Right. So I knew he was there, you know, my partner at work. And so, you know, when it all happened, the first thing I did was I texted him. Now, there's a couple of girls. One was uh, a really kind of a best friend of mine. And uh, she was getting her nails done one day uh, a couple of days before because she was going out of town. And so when this all happened, I'm like, son of a bitch, man. This girl loves country music. I'll bet you that's where she went. So, you know, um, I called the one dude and said, hey, how you doing? You okay? He's like, yeah, you know, we got out of there. You know, we ran out and, you know, family's good. We're driving back from Vegas. Fuck that place. We're never going back. Um, you know, and then uh, the, the, the friend of mine, you know, her and her um, sister were out there with uh, her niece and uh, her daughter. And... Um, so I texted her and the only text I got back was, oh my God, there's blood everywhere. People dead everywhere. We're on our way back. It was terrible. Okay. So, you know, that got me on this path of looking for videos, trying to figure out what went on and what happened and trying to find, you know, really literally people in the crowd. Later, I found out that um, those sisters, uh, one of them, you can hear screaming. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're not twins. They're, um, yeah. But, you know, these sisters, these girls, um, I said, one of them was a best friend of mine for a very long time. And we'd fallen out of touch at this point. But, um, you know, this kind of re, you know, got us talking again. And, um, you know, I went in, uh, on the, I think it was the two year anniversary or the one year, I don't remember. It was one of the anniversaries. The one sister went to it and they sent me a, a, a link to a video that we've all seen from, uh, <clears throat> from the uh, bleachers. In the bleachers, you can hear a girl screaming and uh, she's screaming the name Sarah. And, um, and it's the one where you have two guys carrying a dead body and they're carrying this dead girl from um, towards the stage and they're carrying her to the bleachers. And, uh, you know, you see a pair of boots come down from the bleachers and help these two guys because, you know, the one guy's yelling at the other guy saying grab her fucking arm and shit like that. And I think we've all seen that video. And um, it was civilian footage. And uh, the pair of boots that came down to help uh, drag this body up was one of the sisters. It was uh, my, you know, what was my best friend's sister. And um, dragged her up, put her in the bleachers, and, you know, this this friend of mine sat with this dead person in the bleachers. And um, the voice you hear yelling that name is her, you know, because she's yelling for her niece, who was watching her daughter in the crowd. Now, you think she's yelling for her daughter's name, but no, she's yelling at the niece because the niece is older, and she's watching her daughter, and they were up there towards the stage. They are buried in the middle of all this shit. I ended up going on their Facebook, looking up the Facebook, and um, she had video of her daughter saying goodbye to mom and dad. And, um, oh, how the, sad. you hear the shooting in the background and yeah, it's, it's hard to watch, you know, and that's kind of got me, um, that was kind of during the phase when a lot of the, the drama was breaking out. Right. So, you know, a lot of that was based off of that kind of anger that was hitting me. And, um, so that was, that was kind of going through a lot of that. And then, um, you know, so, so that was, that was their story. And like I said, there's actual video footage of them, you know, there. And, um, and I didn't know it until, uh, till that, because all I see is a pair of boots and hands, you know, picking up a body, <clears throat> didn't realize that was them. And then when I hear the, the screaming voice, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. I know who that is. Um, you know, and so there's, there was that. And then one day I'm sitting there, you know, it took me, I think two years or something to finally admit that, you know, Hey, I'm doing this, you know, on, on YouTube and shit and talking about this and, you know, dealing with this, looking at it. Um, someone at work told me, Hey, you know, um, the one guy we work with, he was shot twice that night. And I'm like, you know, I, I didn't know who he was. I was like, really? You know, like, yeah, you talk to him every night. I don't know how you, you haven't figured it out yet. And I'm like, I don't know who you're talking about. And, you know, they're arguing with me. Yeah, you know him. You talk to him every night, man. You're, you're always bullshitting with him. So finally, someone pointed him out. I'm like, holy shit, him? Really? You know, he's a skinny little dude. And so I went, um, I'm not saying no names, but, you know, I went up to the guy and I'm like, I'm like, hey, were you there? And he's like, oh, my God. He's like, he's like, bro, I didn't talk about that until about a month ago. He's like, That's a, if you would ask me like six months ago, I would have probably said, no, nah, fuck you. I don't want to talk about that. Um, but, you know, he, so he told me his story and his thing was he was there. And uh, hey, man, this name's out there. So I'll just say it. He was there with Doug Cotter. And we all see him in, you know, one of the body cam videos, um, you know, being carted out. 
And I remember, see, I knew I worked with Doug Cotter. You know, and now everyone can find out who, you know, where I work. But, um, you know, I knew I, I he was in a different department, but, you know, and there was a uh, fundraiser for him. You know, so there was that. And um, so these two guys, you know, you know, uh, actually three of them, I think, in that group got hit. But uh, one wasn't very serious. So I was dealing with that. And like I said, it's very strange because out here that the, Vegas is a vacation spot. You know, I know it's a big um, uh, conspiracy with Brian Shields. Like, oh, my God, all these people from Southern California. Well, yeah, shit, it's like four hours away. It's our vacation spot. That's that's where everyone goes. Um, and so it's not that big of a deal. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I had these two people that I worked with that were hit, you know, and um, and uh, one of my new personally. And then, uh, you know, I was walking out one day. And some guy goes, hey, I heard you were doing some, you know, talking about that Vegas stuff. And I said, yeah, yeah. You know, he said, well, my niece was there. Oh, OK. You know, again, you know, and I mean, even there were other people that I worked with that were like, oh, yeah, my buddy, this was there. And he was saying this and whatever. Um, so uh, okay. Um, anyway, let me get back. To the okay. So, you know, then uh, this guy tells me, yeah, my niece was there. I said, oh, OK, well, can you can you find out what the story was? I said, well, the guy she was with died. So I don't know. You know, I'm trying to figure it out. Well, um, you know, he finally had to ask his wife about the story because he's like, look, I can't ask my niece, you know, what, you know, this traumatic event and stuff. And uh, it turns out, uh, you know, his niece was there with uh, Frazier, you know, the, the, the guy in the wheelbarrow. Brian. Brian Frazier. And um, she was uh, with him. Well, she was she was best friends with his wife, I guess. So she was with the wife and him when he got hit, you know, and she pretty much knows the moment. Got hit, supposedly and this is all like fourth hand information i never shared this before because it's fourth hand information and um you know but uh yeah he was saying yeah she was uh you know he was uh they're running away they figured out what it was and they started running and she said she saw him lurch and they just kept fucking booking it and they just ran and uh kind of lost track of him and that was pretty much all of that story that i got so then make things even better i'm uh I'm working with this guy. Well, not, not working with the guy necessarily, but I was talking to this guy who I've known my whole life, who's known me my whole life. And, um, you know, and he's telling me, he said, yeah, well, one of my friends was there. She got, she got killed. I was like, well, who the fuck is that? And he said, oh, she worked at the Chili's. I used to go hang out with her, you know, on lunch break and stuff like that. They probably had something a little more going on that you didn't want to talk about, but whatever. And um, her name was Rocio, Rocio uh, Gaian. And um, so he showed me a picture she'd sent him from the concert and all that sort of stuff. He showed that it was legit. And um, he asked me, he said, do you have, you, you know, you got any information, man? If you've been looking at this stuff, you know, you, any idea what happened? And I'm like, well, I figured it out. I figured it out. I'll look. And um, so there's been since that, and that was a long time ago. That was a couple of years back. Since that moment, there's been two things that I've been trying to do here, you know, mainly, mainly. And um, I was looking for the story of Rocio Gallien. And I was looking for the story of whoever this was that got brought into those bleachers. Now, course we don't have in on the map of the deceased we don't have anybody in those bleachers so that person must have somehow made it into a truck made it into a car somewhere and made it to a hospital and died there i just don't know who it is no one's ever been able to tell me who that who that is and um because we do have video i mean of the person bleeding from their head and um you know my friend that was sitting in the bleachers with her said you know she's definitely dead uh whenever i asked about her you know what color hair she has the blood you know what color um you know, what color, uh, uh, you know, what, what color dress was she wearing? She said she was wearing a dress. Oh, it was blood. Everything was blood. Uh. There's no colors. Everything's blood, you know? And so um, she had no idea, you know? And so I've been trying to figure that out. The Rocio Guyen thing, you know, through watching these videos, which is kind of why I've been watching these videos, uh, you know, in order, in sequence, uh, I've, I'm pretty much able to run down her entire story. And that was the problem with this documentary that kind of triggers me, is that they're showing her story. They're showing her exact story. And as they're showing her story, they're telling another story over the top of it. And so to me, that was kind of disrespectful to you know, somebody that actually passed away, right? Because if you're, if you're the kid, you know, of... You know, because she had a couple kids that she left behind. You know, if you're her kid or, or her husband or something like that, you know, the husband was with her that whole time. And, um, you know, you're going to watch this. And you're going to say, hey, that's that's my wife. That's my mom. That's, you know, why are you telling this other story? Why are you, why are you saying that this is her, this is somebody else? I always felt that that was kind of messed up. And so that's, that, sad. that's one thing that kind of triggered me about that documentary is that they were using, they were, and the deceptive editing of it was, was what was really bothering because they, you know, obviously it's okay. You're showing chaos in the festival, whatever, you know, you're showing people running, you're showing people, you know, okay. That's what you're going to show in something like that. But, you know, you're editing out the husband, 
because when when the husband's there, it's obvious that it's not the girl we're talking. That's talking. It's not this narrator because she survived. We see her boyfriend. We know that she was with her boyfriend the whole time. But excuse me. Obviously, they don't have any um, footage of that. So instead, what they're using is they're using the footage of Rosu Gayen because there's a lot of footage of her, you know, escaping this concert that we can pretty much trace her footsteps the whole way for the last 20 minutes of her life. And so you're you're showing one story, but you're telling another. And to me, that was kind of wrong because she she passed away. This girl survived, and it's good to hear her story. It's not that she doesn't have a right to tell her story. It's just wrong that you're 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 kind of using subterfuge to make it look like it's something else. Anyway, you guys all got quiet because I started ranting there. But that was that was my issue with that that documentary. I was only quiet because I didn't want to interrupt you, and I've been sending the link to people to get more people to come watch. Me too. <laughs> I was too. I was in. I was too. Yes, and Angela, I could hear you vigorously typing. And you saw me vigorously in the typing. Yeah, I'm like. Yeah, so I mean, you know, but that that was the thing, and and you know, I'm still trying to figure out like who is this girl in the bleachers? Who's who's this girl that we see get dragged out by her, you know, hands and feet? Um, and I've had people come into chats and say, you know, oh, uh, I can tell you, I, I know who it is. I, I just got to look at my notes and stuff like that. But nobody's ever sent anything to me, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, my whole thing with a lot of this, especially lately, was um, I don't believe anything unless I can verify it, right? So there's a lot going on that people are saying this and saying that, you know, and a lot of it's speculation, a lot of it's, you know, whatever. Um, a lot of things we believe to be true within this event that you find out later is not true um, because, you know, somebody said it, somebody says it over and over and over again. And before you know it, it becomes the common knowledge, becomes common theme of what happened, you know, within this. And it's not based off any facts. It's just based off somebody's speculation. Somebody did a long time ago. Everybody jumped on board. And next thing you know, it becomes kind of a fact. And that's that's always been a problem with me. So, <clears throat> you know, if I cannot individually verify it myself, it's like, eh, yeah, just yeah, that didn't happen. That's how I am. I watched all those videos back in the day. And whenever people said stuff, it's like I had to go do my own digging before I would accept it, you know, because there was, like you said, a lot of stuff that just got said as if it was fact. And it's like, well, once you dig into it a little bit, you realize the smarty pants who thought he knew it all didn't, you know. Yeah, yeah. There were I mean, narrative pushers that just had their own scenario of what they thought happened. And once they pushed it, a lot of people just went for it as fact. Yeah. And there's a lot of that. There's 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 a ton of that, you know, and there always was like I remember. I remember the early days, you know, starting this off and I used something that um, I can't even remember the guy's name, the guy's channel. He, he turned into Blackstone Intelligence or some weird shit like that. I oh, Morphonius. Yeah, 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 Morphonius. Yeah, I remember using something from him one time and I'll never forget it, man, because, you know, I, I figured he, he knew what he was talking about more than I did. You know, I did, I'm, too, until I started fact checking some stuff and I was like, he just had a big channel, but he didn't really know all the stuff he was telling us. Yeah. So. I, I I ran, I springboarded a video off of something he had said, and I don't even remember what it was, to be honest with you. And I got fact-checked hard by KL, of all people, you know. And this was back when she was, you know, watching my videos and stuff like that. And she fucking hit me hard in the comments. And I went back, I fact-checked it. I'm like, holy shit, she's right. Like, he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about on that. Well, but at first he came across as if he did. And a lot of times, who was that other guy that died? um god what was his name oh yeah the, the because he dude? came off as like really knowing a lot of stuff too and then as i started fact checking him i was like he was full crap too the what was guy. his name i can't remember yeah he's the uh he was he's the big Twitter. guy yeah he was a really big guy do you remember angela uh-huh you know i know websites and all fashion. kinds of stuff and then he died of i think cancer or kidney disease or something weird the yeah. really big guy you said he was huge he was like a bald dude bald dude huge i think he might have had glasses and he did he YouTube always, videos? He did YouTube, but he also had a website. It was always like, this is going to come on my next episode. And he, he came across as if he was like really an official guy. I think he and said then, he was like a, he was claiming he was like a whistleblower for the mob or something like that. Something, yeah. Yeah, I think they, I think that was his. his Scott Binsack. Yes, Scott. Binsack, there yes. You go. His yeah, videos are still up, right? I don't know. I yeah. watched all of Scott's until he died. I mean. Well, I started kind of backing off of him a little bit before he died because I was fact checking stuff like PS was saying. Yeah. And when right. I started fact checking some of it, also he started pulling the on my next episode I'm going to cover this. So I'd be right. waiting and waiting. Yes. And he wouldn't cover it. And his videos were always like three or four hours long. Yeah. And back then we didn't have as many Facebook groups. Well, I was in this one group, and all the moderators had our little separate chat. 
and they like assigned yeah. me that I had to be the one to watch Bin Sack and then report back to to them what was that's important funny. Because yeah, think about nobody it. wanted to be making time. posts or videos of stuff that wasn't true, and he started putting out some good stuff and then putting out some weird stuff. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was strange, man. And you know, I never, I never really trusted you know, his information because he would always say like. I have information from people that I can't mention. And it's like, yeah, yeah. That means you're making it up, dude. It that means the people in your head. Ever. Next episode, tune in and, you know, buy my yeah. sugar shakes or whatever. I don't know. The, the highlight of my Vegas watching was when I got Hoover to pull down a video and then he blocked me on uh, Twitter. Oh, I, I thought that was. You got him to pull down one? That's yes. Down. Yeah. It, it, in like 20 minutes. Which and one? It, it had to do with uh, ballistics of uh of the 223 and he used 22 long rifle and i called him out on it on twitter and he pulled the video down and then blocked me quite a few people got blocked off of him i learned just from us chatting in the facebook groups that a lot of people like what nick just said had put a comment correcting something like the people that have really researched this deep and he would just block them so they couldn't comment anymore I, i had him pull down a video on um he did a video one time about uh oh what was it uh um it was a cop picking up rounds on the ground. Oh yeah. 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 Rounds on the ground. And I think that video was up for about two days. And, um, you know, I did a video and LinkedIn in his comments and it was, uh, basically all you had to do is go back 30 seconds on that same video that he used. So it's deceptive. And that's, that's right. what he knew though. That's the thing. Yeah. He would and that's where me and Tank always get up. We always go at it. Me and Tank about that because it's like, you know, you're deceptive at that point. You know, you're, you're spreading, you're knowingly spreading disinformation because you know, all you had to do, I mean, it's the same video you use. It's the same video. So all you had to do oh. is go back. Actually, it was like 15 seconds and some guy says, uh, somebody dropped an RJ tactical or something on the ground. Everybody check your sidearms. Well, yeah, yeah, and if you've done some research, you make a video and you might be incorrect about something, so someone corrects you, it's like most of us are like, oh, okay, cool, I must have missed that. But it's like when it's a video like what Hoover would use, where it's like you said, back up 30 seconds, it's like he didn't miss that. He knew. No. Yeah. Absolutely, he knew. He totally knew. Just like, I mean, that one video that I was talking about, I wasn't Angelica, the only one. Hi. Angelica, hi. Hey, Angelica. I wasn't the only one in Twitter that was going after him about that, but I'm like, hey, dude, how can you compare 223 or 556 to 22 long rifle? I mean, there's, there's a, some problems there, <laughs> you know, and, you know, then the video was gone and I was blocked. I'm like, okay, I see how this works. All right. So since Angelica's here, I want to ask you, Angelica, what, what got you involved in this thing? What got you involved in Vegas? Uh, well, I lost a friend in the Pulse shooting here in Orlando, which is where I live. Yeah. And so I didn't think much of it, you know, at the time, you know, I kind of lovely weather right now. Huh? I heard the weather's lovely out there right now. <laughs> Actually, today it is. It's great. It's the uh, <laughs> hurricane blew all the you know rain away and everything, so it's been sunny and actually pretty cool uh, for Florida. <laughs> you know, it's been in like the 70s. Yeah. So, but yeah, we did really well. Um, at, surprisingly, so here in Orlando, not all areas of Orlando, downtown Orlando, which I'm like literally five miles from, mm-hmm. is super flooded. Like that's the biggest thing that we got here in Orlando was just like crazy flooding. I've never seen. I'm a native from Orlando, fifth generation Floridian. So, yeah, I've never seen flooding like this in Orlando before. Oh, um, but we got super lucky because I live kind of uphill from a lake. So, you know, everything always has flown downhill into the lake. And when I have like a huge ditch across the street for me. So, so yeah, we did really, really well where we're at, actually, our neighborhood. Um, there are some trees down because it's a very wooded kind of neighborhood. So I did a video. It's on my channel, you know, the little bit of damage that was here in my neighborhood. But we did fantastic compared to the rest of the state. I feel really, really bad. I mean, I've been to all these places. I was a limo driver for 20 years, so and I now work for Google Maps. So I'm constantly like all over the state. And so, yeah, I, I mean, these areas are, it's kind of crushing, heartbreaking because, you know, I've been to these places many times and, you know, it's just home to me. So yeah, my home is destroyed. destroyed. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really sad. Yeah, I'm glad you're okay. I had a check on her yesterday. I'm like, you know, I wonder if Angelica's doing okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. I didn't lose power or anything. Right. Um, I lost a panel on my fence, which we have a wood privacy fence. And then, um, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, two papaya trees fell, but they were full of fruit at the top. So that was kind of top heavy weight anyway. And, you know, before the storm hit, I was like, oh, I can see these trees going down, which they did. So we did yeah, really, really well compared to other hurricanes that I've been through. So, okay. but yeah, I'm very grateful. So anyway, yeah, I lost a friend in the Pulse shooting and, uh, you know, I bought it hook, line and sinker, which, you know, typically isn't my style anyway, but, you know, just kind of two and two added, you know, to four. So I was like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. But then, you know, and after I started, what got me involved with Vegas was I, it just kind of came up like in my YouTube feed, you know, like shooting, you know, and, and so I was like, oh, wow, what's this? Another one, you know, and so I linked into it and then the sheriff out there kept changing the narrative. 
you know, first it was multiple shooters all up and down the strip. Then it turned into three shooters. Then it turned into one. And, you know, and then the narrative just kept changing out of the sheriff out there. So that kind of, it was like my initial, like within the first few days going, what is going on out there? You know? Yeah. So, and I go to a lot of concerts. I go to a, night, a lot of nightclubs. Um, it's just kind of in my blood, kind of like being a biker, you know, my mom always <laughs> like, when are you going to outgrow this shit? And I'm like, probably never. I don't know. I may you never will. Yeah. <laughs> you never will. If you're going to come family. visit me again, drive your, get back over here. Yeah, I know. Well, that's how I got to meet Angelo was I had to go pick up the Google car in California. Yeah. So <laughs> I got to drive it all the way back to Florida, which was an amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's how I got to meet Angelo. But yeah, for sure. I definitely need to get back out there and visit you. I love you. And yeah, that was your hubby. You're out in my area then because uh, I think Google's uh, Burbank. Mer uh, Mountain View. Oh, okay. Mountain View, California. <clears throat> Isn't it, It's out by LA though, right? Uh, no, it's, north. it's closer to me. Oh, yeah, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I know Google has a building out here in LA. Oh, they, okay. So yeah, Google, uh, YouTube, all of that's over here by me in Silicon Valley. Oh, okay. So she do have a building out here that I think okay. was running like, uh, the studios that started Pokemon go, they were originally oh. out in LA. Right. So I, I don't know. I, that's, that's the only kind of reason I know, but, um, they got something out of here. So let me guys, let me ask you guys this, man, since you know, you got everyone here and, um, you know, I know it's going to go into a little bit of uh, weird uh, territory because we, we don't agree. You know, we're not going to agree on everything. No, it's but what let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> let me let me ask you this. Like what what are the questions that are still left unanswered within this for you? Like, Why they are, won't answer the FOIA requests is a very big red flag to me. OK, I can I can. I, didn't I send you that, that? That Oh, no, I sent that to Angela. So there's a video by a, a YouTuber. Um, what the hell's his name? Uh, Slightly sociable. Manny B maybe no slightly, no slightly sociable is his name and um <clears throat> he also has a channel called barely sociable and I think you this... sent me the links to those I subscribed okay so he did a video and I don't know if you watched it but it was about the CIA and their FOIA request right and it was the uh, CIA lunchroom and they I guess they've been hitting them with these FOIA requests for quite some time and they were redacted they redacted so these guys are like well, you know why the fuck would you redact the lunchroom complaints of the CIA and uh, the cafeteria at the CIA headquarters, I guess. And eventually they unredacted them. And the shit they were redacting was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was like, you know, somebody complaining about the grape tomatoes and stuff like that in, in the salad. Um, at one point, there was somebody that was like losing their minds over the uh, the tater tots that were being, or the hash browns that were being, you know, served at, at breakfast time because they were from uh, Carl's Jr. Or, yeah, I think it was Carl's Jr. And not um, Dunkin' Donuts as promised. I mean, and this is all stuff, right, that's redacted. This is all stuff that at one point was redacted by the CIA. And then eventually it got, it got declassified, unredacted, and sent to these people. And so he's going over all this sort of shit, and he's like, this is the kind of crap they're hiding. They hide everything. Like, they just don't want to give you any information. They don't care. And um, so... We're not in a free country anymore. Haven't been in a long time. Right. Yeah, I mean... I'm just learning that. Well, I think, I think the FOIA request... <laughs> the FOIA system is broken. You know, and, and the deal is, like, these guys have information... And they have information. They don't care about me or you because in their minds, I mean, and this is, I guess, politics, we're bleeding into politics, um, you know, and I guess in, in the grand scheme of politics here, you know, you work for them. They don't work for you. And that's the way they see it, you know, for the most part. That's not and, how it's supposed to be. That's not how it's supposed to be. That's not how the country was set up and all that sort of stuff. But that's kind of what we're, we're running into. And, you know, and I were, you know, in my environment, I've, I've dealt with small time politics, very small time politics. And it's the same thing. You know, they're like, yeah, these people work for us. We don't work for them. You know, they, they, that's why it's they the other them. way around though. Yeah. And so that's not how we're supposed to operate, but you know, there's a difference between what's in black and white and what's in reality, you know? And so to me, it's like the FOIA stuff. I mean, I've still got, you know, a lot of FOIAs out there. And I don't know if I, you know, um, how many of you know about this, but the, uh, you know, they sent me, I did, I did about I think a dozen maybe FOIAs at this point. And uh, one of those groupings of FOIAs, man, one was uh, I wanted Paddock's gambling records. I wanted his bank statements and I want all text message data from the three phones that were found in the room, you know? And so um, they sent me back, you know, two of them, two of them, you know, was um, the FBI sending me back a letter saying, you know, oh, it's going to go in the vault. Don't worry about it. It's none of your business. And the third one, I got a letter from the Department of Justice. And I'm like, that's weird. You know, so yeah, I, you I, showed me that. Yeah, I, I messaged everybody, you know, and, and nobody's seen one of those before. You nope. I, I even did a video on that. And so it's like I got a letter from the Department of Justice, not the FBI. And I know they're the same, 
for the most part, but they're different departments. So why does the Department of Justice want to know who I am? And it's only for the gambling records of Steve. It Matt. was freaky. Yeah, it's a, the it's a gambling records, right? So why do you guys want to know? And the way it's written is really screwball because I don't know if they sent the wrong form or what happened, but the form says something to the nature of uh, we need to know uh, who you are in case we are letting go of information that may implicate somebody that is is um, included in the process of of FOIA requests or something of that nature, something really strange. And um, <laughs> so my first thought was, well, I mean, what's Paddock got to do with your, your people doing the FOIAs? Like, I don't, I don't understand that. Like, you know, and if I'm not going to take it verbatim, well, I mean, why the hell is the the Department of Justice even getting involved in this? Why do they care? <clears throat> and why is it just gambling records? It's not even bank statements. Bank statements, they said, you know, we're looking into it, I think, was that one. I believe the uh, text message data was something they said that was going to go in the vault or something of that nature. Um, so to me, you know, as far as the FOIAs go and them hiding information, I think they always do. I think they always do. And I think they probably, you know, there's it's a possibility they do it because it's like they'll hide everything. That way, when it's something, you know, they can say, well, we just hide everything. dude." Like, Well, yeah, they're you know. burying stuff in the vault, too. I got a link right before we went on. I haven't been able to dig into it yet from uh, Rick, one of the survivors. Yeah. And he had found something or someone had sent him and it was a link to the vault um, on gun stuff. And it was like a lot of the stuff was like, oh, I didn't see this before. Diane like, said she had to go, you guys, in the private oh. chat. Oh. Okay. And it's like 399 pages of redacted stuff. So it's like I haven't gone through it to find out like what is the significance of it yet. Yeah. But Rick had already read it all and he's like, you got to read this. You got to read this. But yeah, it was right before we went live. So I haven't had a chance to dig yet. You should see all these links that I have saved to my phone in relation to Vegas. Like I have a page that's covered with these links that I've saved and most of them are actually opening. Wow. Yeah. I know there was some old links uh, you sent me at one point that, uh, yeah, we're, yeah. we're no good anymore. <clears throat> so I was supposed to be there in Vegas uh, today. <laughs> Yeah, you got, I wonder why you were home already. Yeah, I didn't want to drive down there. Oh, dude, I am so, so disappointed. I was supposed to fly in on Wednesday and then, you know, the hurricane came. So it you know, got bumped to Thursday and then Thursday got canceled. And then Friday, I was supposed to actually fly into Philadelphia. Talk about around your elbow to get to your ass. But yeah. I was supposed to fly up to Philadelphia and then across to Vegas and, you know, 10 hours worth of travel time. But whatever, to me, it was worth it just to be there for the first. And, right. you know, I had already made arrangements with Corey Langdon to pick me up. And, you know, every time I go out there, I hang out with her. I love her. She's such an amazing person. Yeah. Um, you know, the taxi cab driver, for those who don't know. Yeah. Like Langdon. But, uh, yeah, we're super close now. We talk a lot, you know, good friends on Facebook. And, you know, I love her to death. She's she's wonderful. So I'm kind of heartbroken because she put a post today that she wasn't going to go to any events because, you know, I know why she messaged me and she was like, I have no peer support, so I'm just not going to go. So anyway, um, you know, and so, yeah, I was supposed to be there, super disappointed, um, you know, and then I just canceled the whole damn thing because I was like, if I can't be there for the first, then I'm just not even going to go. So, right. you know, I plan on going out there probably in the next month or two anyway, just because, you know, I was like, yeah, I usually do once a year vacation. I made a ton of friends out there, you know, since this since this event, I've never been to Vegas before, but then, you know, after the first year on the first year anniversary, I was like, I have to go, I have to go. And then I've been every year since the first year I went, I was with sleep depth and, you know, Chris. And so sleep depth and I stayed in the same place together. And then we walked around and did all this investigating, did some videos together. That was thought, the second anniversary. Oh yeah. The second one. Yeah. And, and so I was supposed to meet you for the third, right? Yeah. Third. And then you, yeah. I canceled the week of, because my yeah. daughter reminded me, Angelica made all my reservations for me, did everything. I didn't know sleep depth, but yeah. she knows him. I mean, they've met many times in person. And then my good friend, Edward, he's met him several times. So I, yeah, I they hang out. They live by each other. And yeah. so sleep depth, I offered him to share a room with me. Cause I'm like, we can split a room, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, he was crazy. He was going to sleep on the street. And I was like, no dude. Yeah. Him and I were going to share a room one year. Yeah. And then the I canceled the at the last minute and I felt bad because like him. So I went ahead and I paid for his room cause we were going to half it. But then what he did was he he found somewhere else that that he was going to uh, visit his girl out or something. Mm -hmm. And it was like way cheaper than what we were going to originally pay. So I paid his whole room because I felt, you know, it's like it's not his fault. I decided the week of I'm not going, you know, because mm -hmm. my daughter's like, mom, you know, you're going to have to wear a mask getting on the plane. Mm -hmm. okay. And I already have plane issues like I am severely distraught over putting my foot on the plane. Mm -hmm. I was going to make myself do it, but I'm like, I can't do it with wearing a mask. I just can't. Yeah, well, I, I cheated. I wore the face shield thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, refused. I mean, the whole time here in Florida, I was just like, not doing it. I mean, the first month or so, 
Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. You know, I was scared and concerned just like everyone I else. I flew last week and they didn't make us wear Yeah. Masks. No, yeah. That's, over. that's been over for yeah. a while. Yeah, last year. Plane, you don't have to wear one on the plane yeah. anymore? No. I didn't last year. Frontier yep. Airlines. Yep, no, not on Frontier. I flew last year on Frontier out to Vegas. and It's not a federal thing anymore, so. Yeah, no. Well, exactly. my parents were in uh, Greece and uh, they were flying back from Munich to Chicago and they had to wear masks. Well, yeah, that's that's international, international right? Yeah, yeah. But I think federal the 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 federal thing ended. I think earlier this year, if I remember right. Okay. Like, yeah, it did. It's February somewhere around there. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't think you have to. Uh, Hi, Angelica. Hey, Matt. How are you? Good. That's good to know. Glad you're okay. Yeah, I'm I'm doing great compared to others. I have power. There's still a lot of people here in Orlando with no power, no internet. You know, that yeah, I got a friend that's down in Fort Myers, and uh, he lost okay. power and had some damage to his property, but I mean, not too much, but yeah. Yeah, there Fort Myers there. Beach is trashed. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the video of, like, the guy swimming in his fourth floor hotel room? No, I didn't wow. see that. <laughs> That's how high the water was. He was. I heard there was sharks going down the streets. Is that true? I've heard it, too. I, I would believe it. it. I would, it wouldn't surprise me because, yeah, there's a lot of sharks out there, you know, in the Gulf of Mexico. Could so. you just imagine? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I would freak That's out. That's a good way for like migration. I'd have a heart movie. attack and die right there. Yeah. Sharknado. Yeah, that was horrible. Yeah. yeah um, so, okay, so, you know, let, let's go into that. Like, um, you're talking about how, you know, you're, you, the FOIA is a problem. They, they, they're not sharing you with the information. Well, I mean, but I have from- a lot of other problems besides that, but that's my one thing right now that I'm like, come on, give us some stuff. We haven't had anything new in a long time. What would you like to see? Like, what, what would be, you know, as far as uh, even... We're like, never going to get but- it, but I'd like to see ballistics. Me well, too. Well, yeah, like, too. I still got on the table, like Michelle and I were talking on the phone today, and it's like, there's all these things that we've researched, you know, that we had all these questions, and there's so many things, it's like we threw off the table, got our answer, got rid of it. But there's still these couple of things that you know probably aren't what happened, but you're not taking it off the table or ripping up that sheet of paper yet until you get the information. And with the ballistics, it's like one of the things, and I know... Yes, you're going to not like this, but no, one of the things that is still on the table for me, and I'm not like 100%, you know, behind this, but it's like the multiple shooter thing up and down yeah. the strip at the other hotels. Shut up. I see you laughing. So no, I want to see ballistics. I want to see Kathy. every one of the yeah. bullet holes that went in those victims and survivors actually match the guns in his room. And it's right. like, I'm not right. going to be satisfied 100% and ready to rip off my multiple shooter thing and throw it in the garbage. And that's just one of my things. It's like well, the closest, the, the closest, I'm sorry. The closest we got to any ballistics was them in the fit report releasing how many rounds were shot from each rifle, correct? Right, but we never got anything from yeah. the victims in the venue. And we had one right. survivor say the hospital pulled a nine millimeter out of her husband. And the doctor let him take yeah. him home, which I thought was weird that the doctor would let him take him home. But this girl was on Farmer's Channel, and then, mm-hmm. you know, everyone went yeah. and attacked her, and she kind of disappeared. And it's like, well, he attacked wait her a, a minute. Bit. Well, that's true. But it's like, I was upset because this girl fell off the face of the earth. And it's like, I kind of wanted to question her and hear more about this 9 millimeter. Yeah. Right. It's like, I still have multiple shooters on the table. And mm-hmm. I know Angelica does, too. And it's like, I'm not saying, you know, oh, that's what happened or that's where my research led me. But it's like, I'm not satisfied yet that I can crumble up that thing and throw it out the window. All right. Well, let me speak here. Um, I did the 911 calls. Yep. And yep. there were I so throw- many, I mean, hundreds from she read them all. 17 different hotels. You know, and so for me, you know, and then listening to like the VIP check-in camp counter at the Paris, who the lady was calling, she worked there at the Paris from the VIP check-in counter. And she straight up said, you know, a lady just got shot in the head right in front of me and she's, she dropped to the ground and I think she's dead. So that was, you know, one of the one calls that just really has stuck in my mind and, you know, many, many, many others, you know, and so when I've gone out there many times, I've, you know, hence talked to security guards, police officers employees, um, you know, people on the bus, you know, just random people. And so I've heard it many, many, many times from, you know, these different witnesses who worked in the other hotels that have said, yes, we had a shooting here as well. You know, so, you know, to me, they were, it was a terrorist attack on Vegas, you know, and they were all up and down the strip at 17 different hotels, not a doubt in my mind. So, I mean, I mean, I also, you know, Sleep Dep and I, when we went to the MGM Grand, we, I actually, it's, I have a video of it. Um, hey, Michelle's found, here. <laughs> I just sent her a text. We found uh, bullet strikes in the walls at the did, MGM yes. Monorail, sta- Monorail oh, yeah. Station. The MGM Monorail Station, there's bullet strikes in the walls that they Trans- obviously station, freshly yeah. painted over. Um, and then on the 911 calls, there's security and a tram operator who, you know, mm-hmm. called in and said, we have two people shot in the leg. You know, one's passing out um, who, you know, were shot here on the monorail platform. So if you're shot in the leg, 
you're not going to run, you know, that many blocks. And then to get to the monorail station is not easy inside the MGM brand. You have to kind of. You did all of that. You I showed it on video. So yes, I have video of how you walked it. Yes. Along you walked the, the whole thing. thing. Yes, I did. And yes. I was like on video, you know, and I was yes. like, oh, you know, if I was shot in the leg. Yes. Pretty severely, which these people were, you know, I was like, would I walk all the way to the monorail station, past police, past ambulances, past people who are willing to take you in their personal vehicle? You know, would I walk all that way to go to the monorail station at the end? Yeah, you walked far. You <laughs> walked so far. And she is, reenacted it on her channel is what she did. Was it you and Sleep Dead together, yeah, right? Yep, we were together. And they walked from where the guy, you know. Right, yeah, I think I saw that too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and went the whole route. Yep. And I had always said that Corey Langdon video, mm -hmm. that what sticks out in my head for multiple shooters is where her taxi cab was when she first started out. Not when she got up to the Mandalay Bay, but before right. that. Right. Right mm -hmm. behind and up above, it's as clear as day. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's not echo from like far away because it's, it's I don't know what to call it, but it's like right there sound, like current sound right there, not an echo. Yeah. It's on top of you. And, yes. you know, the, right and it's super loud. It's ba 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 ba. Right and then she even says, because there's this pause, a good pause. It's not like a second pause or a couple second pause. It's a good pause, and you hear it real far away. Pop, 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 pop. And she says, now it sounds like it's coming from further away. Yeah, so okay, or something like that. That's a natural yeah. reaction, you know, and you're not hearing <laughs> echo from any other of the other volleys. Not no, it's like right there. I, I don't know about y'all, but did you ever feel that the cadence to those shots in the Corey Langdon video sounded a little different than the ones that we heard in the other videos? Yes. Oh, yeah. You'd have to match absolutely. that up. Absolutely. Like, you'd have right. to absolutely match that up. So the right. problem is, like, there's a lot of work that would go into this, and... Mm -hmm. um, you know, something like, you know, for, for instance, that. Um, was that the tram area, Angelica, up above the back of her taxi cab? Yes. What's up there? The tram station, you know, because it's on the edge, you know, that yes. long side right on a paddock's room. Yes. You know, that goes over, you know, into like the Luxor and up the strip. So, and yeah. Then, but also what is it, above there. I thought she was in the ballet. So above her would have been the upper quicker, ballet. It was quicker. It was behind. It was when she curve, first started yeah. going. Right. She's oh, actually, okay, yeah. you come in. I walked that area. That's interesting. A, you come up yeah. on the driveway by the Luxor where there's a walkway that goes over to the Luxor. You know, it's like leads into the mall or something like that. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. so she came up that far driveway by the Luxor and then it kind of winds around and then you have to sit in a line and wait your turn as a taxi. So she right. wasn't actually in, in the Mandalay area, Bay yeah. proper yet. Um, she was kind of right on the edge of that corner of the Mandalay Bay. So what else is right there above her is not only the tram station, um, is that lower roof level yeah. that leads right to the parking garage. And I have a video of that. There's a stair, like a, you know, it's a ladder that's attached to the side of the parking garage that leads down. It's permanently there. It has nothing locking it, nothing stopping anyone. No, you walking. walked on top of that thing. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, I didn't give a shit. Nobody fucked with me. No, I know you don't care. You'll go. You'll do whatever. I'm like, I was planning on doing a shot before. Now my legs don't hurt. I got my leg paint fit so I can go walk with you. But to do some of that shit, I got to be honest, I'm going to have to do a shot or two and then all my inhibitions will be gone. I, I don't do any of this without shots. I'll go. I'll be like, no. yeah, I'll go. I'll do that. Sure. Angelica has no fear when she goes to Vegas. No, I have none. Zero. Because so, that's the scary part is I have walked on the roof of the Tropicana. Mm -hmm. I've been up on the Mandalay Bay lower level. I have been up to Stephen Paddock's room in that hallway. I have yep. taken the stairs up to, you know, from Paddock's room up to the roof of the Mandalay Bay. Yep. You know, and no one says shit. No one stops me. They're just like, turn, turn, turn. you know, and the scary part is, is there's like, I looked around. There's no video cameras. Like in that area, like going to that right. lower roof level, which would have been prime, primo. Yeah. And that would have explained the sound that we were hearing from mm -hmm. Corey Langdon's taxi video. Exactly. Is you could have totally been right there on that they, lower they, roof level. <laughs> and, shot and, the bullet, and the bullet thing you found inside that little cove right there mm -hmm. on that building up by the tram. You right. showed that too. Yeah, that was on the tram station. Yep. Yes. In my opinion, I believe that, you know, the, the shots that you heard when Corey Langdon was in the uh, taxi cab uh, lane, mm -hmm. if that was coming out of a window, it would have been muffled. Right. Somewhat muffled. It wouldn't have been so loud. Right. Those well, shots were loud. Yeah. Behind they, the cab. They were right on top of her. Right. So yeah. it, it had to have been either from the roof or from somewhere else in right. that general area. Right. Yeah, see, like the problem is there's there's not enough data for that. There's, there's not enough data to make that determination because, you know, it's... <laughs> You know, if you want to talk about like they're going to give us some data on that. Well, no, I mean, what I'm saying is like, you know, it, it is possible to 
you know, to take these videos and, and nobody's ever really done this because it's, it's a lot of work. It's a shit mm -hmm. ton of work. And you can sit there and you can map out the, the, the shots. You can map out the, the muzzle blast, you can map out all that stuff within body cams, within, uh, you know, individual civilian footage, stuff like that, you know, and, and that should be a thing. The problem is the only guy that actually was good at that was this health ranger guy. And, um, you know, of course he's gone because, you know, not that, you know, his information was accurate. He's actually on rumble and he also has his own website. Okay, well, it's not it's not that his information was accurate. I mean, because I'm not going to argue that. It's that he it, he he figured out how to uh, take the sounds and, and subjugate the sounds to um, show the muzzle blast versus the um, the sonic cracks, and and that's a big problem that I think a lot of people have when they listen to this stuff is <clears throat> separating those two. You're you're not listening for sonic cracks. Sonic cracks don't mean shit other than a bullet's landing close to you. The muzzle blast will tell you exactly how many shots are actually fired. Right. But the, the issue that I have with that, and I'm, you know, speaking just, I've, I, I haven't done the research like y'all have. I'm just going to come right out and say that. But from my understanding of firearms and, and those weren't sonic cracks. Okay. The echoes could have been sonic cracks uh, that, that were heard secondary, but that sounded like a regulated automatic firing weapon. When you fire a AR-15 with a bump stock, um, or when you fire a fully automatic weapon, the, the rate of fire is regulated, okay? Um, when you bump fire an AR-15, the uh, rounds per minute tend to speed up the longer you shoot because of pre-detonation, because it's not regulated like on an M4 or an M16 or something like that. The the cadence to those shots, and, and we were hearing, those are, those are muzzle blasts. Those aren't sonic cracks. There's a cadence to those shots that sound different than anything else that I've heard in any other video. Yeah, but what I'm talking about here is we do hear sonic cracks in the venue, you know, obviously, you know, um, at least we do hear, you know, the bullets going overhead and we hear from uh, a lot of the body cams as well, you know, and a lot of people will count the rounds that are being fired by the sonic cracks as opposed to the muzzle blast itself. Well, sonic cracks, there's, there's a problem there because if you're standing in one spot, this guy's firing erratically with with what he's firing with and, you know, some shots are going to go high, some shots can go wide, some shots can go all over the fucking place. Um, and, you know, some 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 of the sounds are actually going to be, you know, muted and muffled by, you know, surrounding, you know, things, which you're going to say it's a flat concert. You know, how the fuck does that happen? You know, some of those rounds were actually hitting behind the bleachers, right? So, you know, all these bodies and bleachers, well, you think that's going to probably fucking muffle some sound, do some things to that as far as the, the actual sonic cracks. Now, it's not going to muffle this, the, the muzzle blast, of course. But the muzzle blast will tell you exactly how many rounds being hit out of that fucking window as opposed to listening to a sonic crack of somebody who, you know, 30 rounds hit near them and then the next 10 hit across the street somewhere. Right. I, I totally understand that. I'm just speaking of the Corey Langdon video. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I understand. I understand from the perspective of being in the venue, depending on where he was aiming and depending on where those bullets were going will depend on what you heard, whether it was a sonic crack, whether you heard the buzzing bee going by your head or, or whatever. See, so if we, if we break down the Corey Langdon thing, tell me this. If let's say a guy's firing a, a gun directly out the window and that's going to make a certain sound, right? Let's say he picks up another gun and he starts firing from 10 feet back from the window. That's going to make a different sound, right? Sure. Sure. So, so you, that's the problem is that we don't have the information, right? You could be right. You could be wrong. You know, we don't have that kind of information. So to yeah, I mean, it is speculation. I'm, I just, but from my perspective, you know, there is a different, definite difference in cadence being that she's directly under the window. She's not going to catch any of the sonic crack. I believe no, no, the, the no, secondary, uh, the echoes that, that were heard of the secondary shots were the echoes of the sonic crack coming back to her. Um, but, you know, the actual shots, they just, to me, had a different cadence to them. You know, they didn't sound like somebody who was bump firing an AR-15. Okay, I have the video pulled up for Corey Langdon. Do you guys want to hear it? Sure. Which, sure. Oh, yeah, I, I was going to pull it up too, but yeah, go ahead. I, I don't know how to share this with you. How to, I'm just going to no, do it. I... <laughs> um. So she can put it back here, and then you'll have to share it to your screen. I could probably uh, find it. Myself. There's a screen share if you go back to your StreamYards place. Okay. And once she puts it up, then you just have to click on share screen, and it'll go up. Yeah. I got the review journal version of it. No, I've got a Corey Langdon. I don't know if you guys can see that. She's got the actual original from Corey. Yeah, oh. well, you can go to her channel, too. Bad. Just go to Corey Langdon channel, and it's called oh. Official Corey Langdon Taxi Video of Las Vegas. Is anybody doing it? I'm um, trying. Of yeah, I'm getting it too. But oh, I gotta, okay. okay. I, I pulled it up on my phone and I, I thought put, I could. Yeah. I put the link to Michelle's TikTok. This is so not where I thought this was going, but all right. And it's been a live stream. 
Oh, whoops. I don't want to do that. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Sorry, didn't mean to sidetrack. Oh, no, 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 no problem. I was I was kind of going off of the uh, – off a little bit there. But um, let's see. It's all your fault, Nick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm used to it. I'm used to it now, yeah. <laughs> and I know this area. I know this area really well. There we go. I got it. I got video of that area. Yeah, I know Surrey very well. <laughs> I stood out there for a while waiting for an Uber. Yeah, it does. It sounds like automatic gun fire. Oh, you got it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's going. The resolution. Can you turn up the volume at all? I don't think so. I think <laughs> okay, that's, yeah, look that's, that's max volume on that. Now it sounds like it's coming from um, farther away. Yeah, so and that's my point, too, is like she heard all of these volleys. And that's the only volley that she says now it sounds like it's coming from further away. And there's yeah. no way Paddock could have ran to a different room. You know, even if he would have stepped back a couple feet into the room, it wouldn't have sounded that far away. So, you know, I even reenacted with a friend of mine running back and forth from window to window and then just going back to the windows. <laughs> you so, did. So, so, like, so, like, you know what, you know what volley that was? Uh, she re- started recording. She said she was, like, the fourth or fifth volley in before she started recording. Yeah, because if you knew exactly what volley that was, you could probably go back – and listen to it from a, a different angle right. and figure out what the sound was like from a different angle. Um, I mean, right. that's the first thing I would do, you know, with something like that is uh, see if you can hear that same volley from the ground. Actually, you know? yeah, if we went to. Um, and if okay. the bullets were hitting in the venue, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I know, got it. Because mean, you want to know where you're shooting. You want to know, um, mm-hmm. you know, if if that's audible from other other avenues other than just this video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not downplaying this video. I'm just saying that that's, to me, that's how I do things or how I would expect to do things. The problem is, like I said, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work that's got to go into this. A lot, yeah. It, it's a shit ton, you know? And I mean, I don't, I'm surprised that at this point, you know, and, and I guess it's because, you know, we don't have a lot of people left and we don't have a lot of people that are heavily motivated to do this kind of stuff. But, you know, I'm surprised that nobody's ever gone through and actually <clears throat> through various body cams, stuff like that, actually uh, looked at where the bullets were hitting during each individual bo- volley as far as, you know, looking at the sonic cracks, listening to sonic cracks within various videos. Because you can look at the the original VIP video and the, um, what is it, the, uh, the Tall Ace of Spades guy, I can't remember his name, but those two videos are um, <clears throat> where he's doing the original shots, the, the first single shots that they call them. Um, you know, with those, you can hear some of those sonic cracks on one camera, but you can't hear them on the other which means that there's, you know, there's some sort of blockage there of, of sound or, or it's just landing too far away. I had my friend come over, I think on the, um, one of those, uh, one of my friends came over, we were going to do a, a live stream one day and then, you know, drama broke out online on this stuff and we just didn't do it. But I was asking her, I, I played that video for her and I'm like, you know, uh, where were these bullets landing? You know, and she said behind us. And I was like, you know, all of them? She's like, no, not all of them, but there were bullets landing behind us during that first original, you know, shots that he was shooting. You know, we could hear him land behind us. Now, I don't know. Again, that's, you know, secondhand information. That's somebody that was actually a witness there. And it's somebody going off a memory of two years or something of that nature. But, you know, if it's landing behind you, you figure if a bullet's landing behind it, if a bullet's going to land behind the bleachers, it's not going to be heard from the opposite side of the venue, right? It just won't. Yeah. You know, because you got all those bodies, you got the bleachers, you got all that, all that sound barrier there, for lack of a better term. The, um, but you got a lot of things blocking the sound. And then you're not going to hear from the other, the opposite side. I'm surprised that nobody's ever taken, you know, basically taken a map and said, okay, volley one, they were all hitting about this area, man. Cause we there was somebody who did. Box. I'm trying to find his video. I can't even remember his name. I, I seem to remember it too. Cause he yeah. used like red streaks coming yeah. down at the yeah. venue to try no, to that was bullshit. Out. That was bullshit. That was, uh, yeah, that was, that was stupid. That I mean, that was, it, okay. So that video was, it was what it was at the time. It, it was good for what it was at the time. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, sit there and, and, and draw a map of, of where these shots were hitting. What that person was doing is that person was taking individual body cams and they were counting the bullets by an individual body cam. So they would switch to body cam number one and they would show all the bullets from that volley fucking hitting, you know, where they could hear how those were hitting. Well, what did those same, what did that same volley sound like from somebody on the opposite side of the venue? Could they hear them too? Were they louder? Were they quieter, right? So by triangulating the sound within various body cams, you know, and like I said, it's a lot of work, you know, but right. by triangulating those sounds, you could figure out... A, approximately where those bullets were hitting not exactly but approximately you could figure out where they're hitting in the vip area where they're hitting across the fucking street in the parking lot where were those hitting 
you know, where, where were each of these bullets fucking landing? And, you know, and you'd have to slow the footage down. You'd have to, you know, do all kinds of stuff with this. And it would take forever to do. Well, on top of five that, years. on top of that, having the ballistics of knowing where all the bullets hit would absolutely help. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, we, we do have. In one of the reports, we do have where some of the bullets were hitting. We do have bullet strikes down there, um, and it's mainly based around where the police were around that wall. And um, but there is an evidence thing showing where I believe I believe it showed the bullet strikes down there in that side of the venue. Um, and then we also have, of course, in the hallway, we know where all the bullets you know were striking in the hallway. But the problem I have with with sound and stuff like this, like even even with the you know the Corey Langdon stuff, and and you know I was a big you know, I was big on the, the two shooter thing, you know, when this video came out, cause I thought, you know, I agree with you, but the problem I have with it is, you know, we don't know, we don't have a baseline. We don't have enough information. So, you know, if Paddock was shooting out the window for, with one gun and then went and picked up another and started shooting out the window from 10 feet away, 10 feet back, well, that sound is going to be completely different. It's going to be completely different. Or if indeed he was shooting at Chuck at this time. And that's why I'm saying it's important to, you know, for something like this, it would be important to, you know, listen to it from a second angle within the concert, say, this is the exact time I should be hearing these shots. Am I hearing these shots or am I not hearing these shots? If you're not hearing those shots, then then you can say, OK, was he shooting down the hallway? What was right. That was that was going to be my next question. Are we hearing the shots of him firing down the hallway? That yeah. was and, and we but see, the thing is, we don't know what that would even sound like. We have no idea. And we're never going to because there's just, no way someone's going to put your gun in there and start and shooting. Just, and recreate it. Right. Yeah, there's yeah, no way to recreate any of this. Like, yeah, you're definitely not recreating that scene. So, you know, that's my problem. That's that's when when I deal with this video here, the, the Corey Langdon stuff and I, and I watch this, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm this is like one of the most important, I think, videos within this uh, this whole thing. And um, this is what created Shuck, I believe, you know, because Shuck came out you know, pretty shortly after everyone started saying two shooters because of this video. And they use that to, uh, you know, basically debunk the idea of the shots not sounding as loud, but deter, deter not debunk. I get that okay. they have constantly okay. try to debunk everything. But. Well, I mean, you know, I, yeah, okay. Whatever word you want to use, that's fine. But, you know, I'm not saying debunk completely, but, you know, things get debunked and they get re, yeah, whatever. Um, I call it taking an honor off the table. Yeah, I, I mean, it did just added Chuck into it, you know? And so, like, I always had questions. Chuck added as an after effect, not like a during effect. You know, oh, yeah, he definitely was. Him, you know, during the shooting, yeah. you know, in Campos, you know, with his, uh, ooh, uh, I think there was a, I think I got shot in the leg uh, by a pedal pellet. That's not how you react when you just got shot. At, by a machine gun you know you'd be more panic you know there'd be more panic in his voice and the level of you know, uncertainty and, I, don't I don't know <laughs> angelica I'm, on the other hand i had this discussion with somebody the other day i think trying to gauge how somebody reacts in a situation like that yeah. is, that is not fair. Me. you Go had ahead. some people down in the venue it, you yeah. had some people down in the venue that laid down you had some people that ran you had some people that just froze yeah, uh, trying to gauge how different people react I yeah, I mean, believe, yeah, trying to, to left their loved ones in there. To me, that was like I would have laid on yeah. the and probably got shot too. Trying, trying to uh, gauge how a certain person reacts in a stressful situation like that or a traumatic situation uh, is going to vary from person to person. Right. I, I mean, I might react different than you, than Angela, than Pointed Stick. Right. I get that. You know, being down in the venue, but you know, him being shot at directly in the hallway. But yeah, I get your point. You know. Yeah, Nick and I have had our own personal discussions. We had one. What was it the other day, right? Yeah, Not too long ago. Yeah. yeah. Him and Shock don't, yeah. They and were... I was like, yeah, but this, like all these people, you know. Well, I mean, now we're hearing that Campos uh, possibly sparked the whole thing off. So it's like. Yeah, yeah that was, know. that came out they, in that documentary. They're using Campos and Shock. They were inserted and their narrative was set to save MGM from liability. Yeah, but you don't think, uh, you don't think Campos was up there or what? Oh, no, I think Campos was up there, but I think okay. that's why his story kept changing. So you don't, uh, but you think Shock was up there as well? I think that he was up there. I just think that the narrative they put for him. Well, yeah, I'm not talking about the narrative, but they were physically to fit what they needed it to, to be. But you believe they're physically up there during, you know, some part. Well, during yeah, the because there's body cam video where you see Shuck late down the hallway talking yeah. to other cops. They were just chit chatting like nothing was going on. OK, yeah, and I'm just trying to get a baseline here. Going, how, okay, where Shuck, we're going with yeah. this. Shuck was <clears> up there, but I do think that he was inserted into the situation to uh, help MGM. Yeah, well, I do yeah, but Chuck wasn't there when those two officers got up there. The the first two officers that were up on the thirty second floor. Chuck was not there. He wasn't there. No. Yeah, I no, thought he... he was off to the side in one of the the no, rooms. Not not at that time. Later on, yeah, you saw. Body cam later but he was on. Not he was there down the hallway with when those two officers chat. were yes. showing up. Right. Wow, we got to check that out. 
That's interesting. Yeah. I've always, I've always been a Chuck denier, to be honest with you. But you I, know, I don't believe what Chuck said either. I mean, I, I went over his statement and Campos' statement. Chuck's okay. statement is a hell of a lot longer than Campos' statement. Yeah, Chuck was yeah. his narrative was inserted to help MGM, but he was there. But I don't know if I buy all the. No, the I, I don't. I don't. He, I don't. he but said. I mean, but like, uh, his brother used to work for LVMPD North SWAT. Yeah. He works for training for active shooter training drills. So it's like if they were going to choose Chuck, they chose somebody that they knew would be loyal. They knew would stick to their story. They knew wouldn't slip up. He was on Ellen kind of like, you know, Campos handler patting him on the back. There we go. There's LVSA. What's yeah. up, buddy? Oh, nice. LVSA, Michelle just woke his butt up to send him downtown. LVSA is the first. He's he's the reason that I, I switched over because I used to, like I said, nice. I used to deny Shuck a lot. And LVSA um, is right. Ellsbury radio traffic does prove Shuck was there. Yeah. And you can hear it in Varson's body cam. So, yes, Shuck yeah. was actually there. I just think that they had him stick to a story that would help MGM as much as possible. But they oh, couldn't yeah. deny certain I things because they knew it was going to be on body cam and radios and stuff like right. that. Well, it's no, but he was sent down. I remember in the uh, the body cam. No, not in the body cam. In the In his statement. He said that he was sent down. Oh, for the key cards or something. Like to the that. key cards or something. You, you base, I think he had to go down to the basement or something. <laughs> and that's why he wasn't there. Well, when... the statements from, uh, was it Allsbury? I believe uh, he said that when he got up there, both Campbell's and Chuck were up there. And um, in the, I believe, the, the, the elevator bank. And um, I don't, he didn't say anything about Chuck leaving, but the shooting was still happening. So that, would have, that, would, that means that if, if that's correct... Then yeah, Chuck could have left before the ten seventeen uh, video that we get of the cops going up there. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, but the 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 thing with uh, that I thought was interesting about this documentary, right? It came out after the lawsuits are uh, you know all said and done for the most part, and um, now all of a sudden we got an LVMPD cop, one of the detectives, saying that Chuck spark or that Campo sparked this whole thing. Yeah, which was I believe if I'm if I'm remembering right, the original timeline, right? Uh, Campo sparked yeah. before the shots went off. Yes. So, you know, now we have a, a, a LVMPD cop basically saying, you know, even though it's, you know, you could say it's opinion, uh, that the reason he started shooting was because Campos went up there and spooked him. And, you know, that sparked this whole thing off. Yeah, right. well, I've been there and I've come in and out of that stairwell door that Campos it was there, you know, and that door does not slam. And that's what he said he was triggered by was the door slamming, you know, as Campos came through it. And that's, you know, what made him turn and start shooting at Campos. Well, he did have cameras up there, right? So, you know, it's 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 always hard to to get somebody to say like, what what do you think that would look like? Yeah, or, but the, you remember where the laptop was? It was way behind him, you know, over on the bar. So yeah, but where was it when you started shooting? So you know, would you go and move it back to the bar and then go shoot yourself in the head? Well, that's the he <laughs> what he had was he had a uh, the NRAM monitor. The NRAM monitor was movable, and um, that thing's totally mobile. And um, you know, it's basically like an iPad. You know, yeah, and that's well, what you the saw. door is actually in front of the cart. So his cameras would have been, well, I guess he did have the peephole camera. So yeah, well, there, he had the peephole camera and then he also had another laptop in the other room too. Yeah. That was yeah, but what, those cameras. But, but the thing is like, uh, well, okay. So the laptop in the other room technically I think would be facing the door. Um, the Hewlett Packard that was in the uh, 134. Uh, I believe that's the one that would have been hooked up to the webcam. The webcam I believe might have been facing the door. We don't know for sure, but um, you know, uh, Bitsco did move it away he admitted to moving it away from them so it wasn't facing them so i'm guessing that thing was actually facing the door and originally i didn't think that but i'm well it had to have been closer to the door because that cord wouldn't have reached that far exactly. well, no, i mean facing the i'm sorry facing the stairwell door yeah well either way you know paddock's quite the talented man i must say because he was sitting there pop pop pop, pop. oh wow let me look at the video oh wow look at this that's what it does not make sense, sense. Yeah, yeah. The well, direct well, shots and his accuracy on top of the garden gloves and his slippers Right. I just in the running back and forth. It's like that whole thing is just like okay. Yeah, and you're gonna bring all this, you know, weaponry and no yeah, like, and watch protection. your monitors. Yeah, and no air protection. You know. But those okay. So those rooms. <laughs> <That tissue. laughs> Which wasn't found in the autopsy. Yeah, the air protection is fucking weird. Um, the tissue so was yeah, in the yeah, autopsies. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. But on the, the video, it's like the you know the camera the the pictures but, we see of Paddock laying on the ground. I don't see any right. tissue in his ears. But they were stuffed in there. So, you, I mean, you wouldn't know yeah, necessarily. Yeah, you never know. Like, I mean, you he know, may have had you know, deep canals down. or something. Who knows? But in the autopsies, it did talk about the tissues. And yeah. one yeah. of them was bloody yeah. and one of them yeah. wasn't. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, and that's weird that he wouldn't now. he wouldn't fork out for some earplugs, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know. I earplugs. don't know one shooter, including myself, that doesn't have yep. a pack of earplugs in the range bag. I've got the big headphones and a couple packages of little squishy ones. I keep spares in my car. 
<laughs> yeah, I've got some in the side pocket of my car too, and big zip ties. I mean, if I ever get pulled over, the cops are gonna be like, "Oh my God, she is a terrorist!" <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, like you know, that, that's yeah, that's a weird thing. But um, God, it just it just got completely sidetracked from that. Yeah, um, and you, you know, and you might want to line your guns up along the wall, you know, near the window where you're gonna shoot out of, not be well, like. We don't know where the guns originated. From. Right. And, and again, you know, we're speculating about a guy who obviously wasn't in his right mind because he shot a thousand rounds at a concert. Yeah. Well, it's always funny because when you watch court cases, you know, and they're always talking about, you know, pleading insanity or whatever. And I'm like, anybody that does this kind of shit has got to be somewhat insane. Yeah, that's true. Maybe not by the legal medical definition, but it's kind of like, you know, like right now we got the parade shooter going on trial next week. The guy that drove through the Christmas parade. Oh, yeah. Now he's going to represent himself. That's good. And he everyone was in the line good, yeah. going, good. Okay, like, why didn't he just plead insanity? And he's, you know, thinks he's going to represent himself, and he's constantly interrupting the judge at the hearings and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that one's going to be a real interesting trial. It starts next week. Was yeah. that the one in Wisconsin? Yes. Yeah. All right, I have a question. Okay. So, this is a list I went over on someone else's panel. I won't go over the whole list, but yeah. uh, why did he need 24 guns and all that ammunition? Because he was going to go longer. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But wait I a minute. Mean, why okay logically speaking okay why would anybody need 24 guns to take out people you would have just needed well sometimes guns malfunction and jam so 24 if he was really going to take out yeah. that many people he would have been i'm just saying you know devil's advocate here okay if i was going to go do what he was going to do and was planning on taking out thousands and thousands of people because he had all those you know unused rounds up there i would probably have taken an enormous amount of guns too. Really? I know how they, they get really hot, then they can jam and misfire and all this stuff. So I would have been tossing them and grabbing a fresh gun too. If I had planned this out, you know, like supposedly he had all this time to plan it. And think I wouldn't have done, if I planned it out. I forgot his earplugs, but yeah, I would have yeah. taken more guns than I I wouldn't have done that. any of the steps that he chose to do. Right. Like it, 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 it's done simpler than that. Like way simpler. Right. I'm still, so what you gave me true seeker, that's not good enough. I'm sorry. But, but yeah. okay. But I mean, five or ten guns. If, but you've taken, if you take the ARs and those type of guns out on the shooting range and you've got, you know, your tons of ammo and you're going to, you know, do it all day long. It's like you will see how hot your guns get and how much they can jam. The, the standard Especially AR-15 the yes. standard AR is not designed to be fired fully automatic. There's certain things in between the AR-15 and the M4 that are different. Uh, well, the, the, bolt, bump stocks the gas operating too, system. Yeah. And yeah, so you know, you and, would and take the, extra guns with you, in my opinion. Extra, well, well visually, yeah, right. 24, right. Well, yeah, twenty-four is a little how, overkill. How many different ammunitions? Yeah, but how many of those were AR tens? Only about five of them, right? I, and I'd have to go back and look at the at the fit report. I, I only yeah, remember. I'd have to go look at the listing again. How many guns did he shoot that night? Was it fourteen or fifteen? Fourteen. That's, that's, I cannot believe that. That is so difficult for me to believe. And then he killed himself in like 10 minutes. But Angela, what I'm saying is you haven't been to the range and seen how hot. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, as much as he was going, going, going with one gun before you okay. break, and then he'd grab another gun, there was something like 15 or 16 volleys, which would kind of match up with how many different guns he used. Plus, he may have been planning on killing a lot more people. In 10 him. minutes, though. I mean, right. if you look at the But your energy, guns, yeah. when you're firing them off like that, get hot as crap. Okay. I get that, but not, you know, you're, you're basically switching a gun every volley. Right. That's yeah, what that's I, what he was doing, yeah. yeah. Is, did you hear that? When you <laughs> but got... I do not believe that somebody that pre-planned that much and put that much thought and effort into all of this would not be wearing, like, the right They're like gloves. loafers, I think. Like loafers. Not be wearing the right kind of gloves and the ear yeah. protection. Those things just exactly. don't make sense to me. Right. Those garden gloves, you couldn't... I mean, I use those little brown gloves when I'm out you know, right. trimming stuff in my garden with scissors. And it's like, you can hardly get your fingers mm -hmm. to just you know, <laughs> manipulate the scissors the right way to trim your plants. And right. I'm like, he had that little, cause these are floppy little gloves inside that trigger. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. With no, you know, either fingerless gloves or a really tight fitting finger wide, uh, leather glove to go in that place. Yep. I mean, to be Have you ever... as accurate as he was and not be fumbling all over the place. Well, nine of them were not AR-15s. You know, okay, nine. That's okay. what the uh, 308 included and the handgun included. Okay. So you had uh, what uh, seven AR tens. Uh, then you had the handgun, and then you had the 308. Right. So I mean, but um, I'm sorry. All, all, all I'm gonna say is is look at how many rounds he had. And five thousand. He was planning on killing a lot more people than. He so did. he was planning on shooting a lot more than he did. What or made him stop? 
Or you could have been, you know, wanting to sell some stuff. That's all I'm saying. I mean, oh. but, you know, if you got, I mean, he brought. The not I, seeing in room 134, what Angelica just said yeah, is still on the table for me, the Yep. Was it a sale? Was yep. it a sting? Oh. Why can't we see in that room? And his guns were definitely set up. A lot of that stuff, like mm -hmm. uh, a showroom. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Yep. So here's my puzzle pieces, and I can't fit them together. Yeah, MPM, Paddock, guns, and a murder. And then a bunch of others. Yeah. Well, for me, so, it's like 9-11 with the put options. You know, there's pre-evidence of pre-planning. You know, oh, I could go through a whole list of the pre-planning with this exactly. whole Vegas thing. You know, and it, and it reflects more on the MGM side, you know, and the government side or whoever. The put options, all stock sales, were. all that yep. stuff. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like 9-11 all over again for me. I think he so. was, I think MGM, like the way up, like the mobsters, you know, yeah, like way up in the money, bad stuff they do. Who knows what they do? I think somebody hired him from the MGM to do something with these guns. And I think somebody murdered Paddock. Yeah. Hang on a minute. I'm crawling out of this rabbit hole. We're falling down. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, where we're are we going? going <laughs> we're just putting it all out there now. We're going crazy with it. I'm throwing, I'm throwing out my grappling hooks here. You've been quiet <laughs> over there, Nick. <laughs> Nick will be calling me afterwards so we can <laughs> argue. No. Well, the no, I thing mean, is, is since the shooter. We're hitting speculation. So. Air quotes. Yeah, we're speculating. Dead, we're never going to know why yeah. he took so many guns or why this was yeah. this way or why he didn't have earplugs. It's like he's not here to ask. Yeah. But like, what 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 would you be expecting to? Uh, what I was what I was originally asking here, and that started this whole shit show, is um, you know, what 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 would you be looking for as far as evidence to to uh, make you comfortable with whatever uh, outcome you're looking? I for would be now? looking for a little bit more than the family being handed a cremated box of remains and never got to even identify their person. Exactly. So, so you know, I mean, that is not normal protocol. Is that really what happened? Yeah. Yep. And yeah, but you're I not talked to get... Eric and no not one with all family, of them, right? No one in the family was asked, you know, for DNA to try to match okay, with his. Okay. They got his yes, DNA okay. from things in the mesquite house and things in the room, but it's like that could have all been planted or set up. It's like the family was not allowed to identify his body. They were just yeah, look at my stashes. <laughs> well, we're just going like way off the rails here. So I'm I like, know. Let's get back on the rails. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, no, it's cool. I mean, I'm just well, like, uh, like, what was it? Kind of like questions. Yeah, I think this is a good conversation. Oh, I really goodness. Like, yeah. what I would say is, who is Paddock? Who is yeah, Paddock? exactly. Yeah. You know, isn't there proof that he worked for the FBI and CIA and he was a gun runner for into Mexico and into the Middle East? Not necessarily proof, just a bunch of speculation. Okay, so yeah, that's he, he, was Lockheed, he worked for the okay. IRS. I mean, there's places that we have like set proof that he worked. Yeah. But then, you know, there's been all kinds of stuff that has circulated throughout the years on the internet about the FBI, CIA, and all that. But there's right. never been like concrete proof of that. Well, okay. you know, that would make it more solid for me, too, you know, is finding out more about his history. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. right. That's, I think I mean from my from my perspective, yeah. I would just like to know why the police didn't release the evidence. And I understand that they didn't investigate this as a murder because they had the suspect. He was dead. They, in their opinion, knew who did the crime. But why not release the evidence that they have? There, you know, the FOIA request. You know, that they, they'd never released all the body cam, from what I understand, even though they were ordered to. Those are the questions I have that would well, would help put together more yeah. understanding on on what actually happened, not necessarily from a, a conspiracy standpoint. But hey, if you have this evidence, you were ordered to release it. Just why do it. You? Why, why aren't my you? My thing when you go, you know, to talking about like that is like if I were a family member. And I was told my brother did all this and he was dead in the room, but I never got to see him and they handed me a box of ashes. Before I let them smear his name all over the world, I would be like, I want proof. They would have right. to. Unless they weren't surprised that he did it. Oh, no. Look at how his family acted, though. Like, that was crazy yeah, nonsense. Yeah, yeah, his brother, mm -hmm. the, the next day, his brother says, well, well Stephen made us all wealthy. Yeah. And, you know, he was saying all yeah, these good things nice about him. And now. And then he flipped. Yeah, yeah. And then he and didn't want any information or whatever. So it's like I kind of think that there was some, uh, you Something. know, maybe other legal proceedings that they could have gone after the family for. And they were like, how about you just shut up? Because the porno charges got dropped off Bruce. And Eric had said in one of his interviews that, you know, Stephen had always done his IRS stuff and, you know, he didn't want to get in trouble, blah, blah, blah. So maybe they went to Eric and said, you know, look, we're going to do audits on your stuff if you don't quit talking to the media. And they probably told the other brother, quit talking to the media. And we'll drop your charges. So yeah. I'm not saying that, that they lied or anything like that, but it was just like I think that they wanted to put a zip on them, and I think that's why we haven't seen much from Mary Lou. It's kind of like they they made deals with these people for whatever reason to. She has never spoken with publicly. some things hanging no. over their head, yeah. or they can't yeah. speak. <coughs> it's right down the street. 
Yeah, funny. Um, I'm just letting you guys know if you want to watch it later. But John Hoover just has a live stream that's coming yeah, up. Yeah, I just got that notification <laughs> too. Oh, Hoover. <laughs> yeah, I figured I'd watch that tomorrow. I like, a po- you know I like to poke a pointed love. stick. Everyone. Yeah, my biggest. Yeah. My biggest no, fan. it's an encore from the the dog walker, <laughs> the, the dog walking well, guy. Uh, the guy who like saw it from the helicopters from three miles away. Exactly. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I know. Hoover, the dog walking guy. Where's he's he? got this other channel, a Patreon or whatever. So he yeah. gives you little snippets in his. Yeah, I don't like that. To go <laughs> over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I don't watch <laughs> shit on Patreon. Well, yeah, I don't either. Me I was just crap in a couple years, actually. <laughs> so. Okay. I don't I don't deal well with speculation, right? So unless, I agree with that point. So you know, unless I can actually put something together that that I have something behind it. Yeah. I don't deal with speculation. And that's why I'm asking like what evidence would you expect to uh to turn, you know, all speculation off or turn it, you know, into reality. Mm-hmm. You know, I would like Campos hooked up to a lie detector test. Yeah. Maybe that would do anything. Is this story change no. <laughs> really? Either that or interviewed by some hardcore person that was really good at interrogating people. That guy's a jelly because his one. story changed too much. And it's it like, did. what is it, it dude? Your story kept changing. Well, the LBMPD And even changed Lombardo story. kept changing the story. Yeah. And at 1.30 in the story. morning, yeah. I'm sorry. No more. I've changed my mind about this. Yep. I think three and a half hours after the shooting, there is absolutely no way they had enough time to investigate. Not at to all. Know that it was a lone shooter. Yeah. Because they wouldn't have had time. They were so busy no. with the, the murdered and injured crowd to even yeah. go investigate those other hotels or anything else down the strip. So if they had come forward the next day or the day after, right. and said, look, we're confident it's one guy. I agree. But it's like, I agree. It's, it's like three hours later. Are you kidding me? I it agree. Took an hour just to get yeah. into the room. I the, like, the uh, inter- I'm sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Okay. I would like for both. Campos and, Sh- and Shuck to be, uh, mm-hmm. you know, lie take, detected. yeah, take lie detector tests. It'd be like an episode of Beavis and Butthead, you know? Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He shot at me. Yeah. I don't think yeah the only person shot. that got talked to him was Ellen. Give me a break. Yeah. Right. yeah well, Campos, Campos, Campos was interviewed for this. MGM pays her. MGM pays her all of her shits in their casinos. Yeah. Well, Campos has gone thing. on a couple of these documentaries, but the thing is, is he's probably handed a script and, and made to say what he's going to say because they're still paying for a condo for him. So yeah. he's still under whatever MGM gag right. order is. So he can't just go on these documentaries and talk freely. He's got to still stick like, to what they allow him to talk about. Okay. So what what do you expect to come out of Campos? Like, what would you expect? I don't know. See, that's the problem. Like, like what what would it change? Like, what are you trying to change with uh, Campos saying anything? Just yeah. to find out what version, because his version is what they hinged the whole timeline on. I think Point that they used Campos to save from some liability, because MGM wanted I agree to with you. I agree not be blamed any more than they needed to be, and they actually won with their lawsuit, because insurance paid for the majority of it. But I think way back in the day, because I remember the press conference Lombardo was doing after the timeline changed, and he's like, well, I kind of agree with MGM, and it's like, it was almost like they completely got him to do a 180 yeah exactly that's MGM. why i got involved was because he donated all that money to his campaign exactly. and now he's running for governor so you know yeah. they went along with what mgm wanted to do and i think that's how the whole campus thing got screwed around yep and, Chris, and, and i'm sleep sorry dep- god yeah. i'm stepping all over everybody oh, yeah i know so am i sleep dep and i interviewed his uh roommate unfortunately the app didn't pick up the sound but you know we you can see it we're literally talking to his roommate campus's roommate and Are you he, talking about Lewis? Yeah. His brother's ex. Yep. His, so, Lewis's sister was married to Campos' brother. Yeah, something like okay, that. Okay, yeah, I've talked to him before a lot. Yeah, and he, you know, and he told us Campos was notorious, you know, and that's why you hear it over and over and over again in all the videos is, you know, fucking Campos, you know, is because right. he was notorious for being, you know, a screw up. So, yeah. you know, and, you know, and also doing seedy things, you know, and so to me, in my mind, you know, I feel Campos was somehow involved with Paddock, you know, probably getting slipped a little, you know, cash here and there, helping him, you know, in, a, you know, ways that he could set it up, you know, and set up the gun sale, you know, and so that's where I always went with, like, Campos, is I think he was trying to make some side money, you know, by working with Paddock. Yeah, but I don't think Campos was intelligent like enough or trustworthy enough that anyone would have pulled him into a drug sale. <laughs> I, or agree a gun buy. Well, I mean, yeah, there's that, more, like, more seriously educated yeah. and people that do that for a job, mm-hmm. mob wise or otherwise. And it's like Campos is not who I would pick if I was going to do a, a, a buy. Yeah, but if you're going to go shoot up, you know, for hours on end, tons of people, you know, would, and you forgot your, you know, air protection. You know, so <laughs> you're not that bright. Uh, yeah, so neither was Pat. So you know, you got two dummies working together, thinking they can make an extra <laughs> side money. You know, and I've Pat- got my hand raised, just so y'all know. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. 
Um, going back to, to what you were saying, pointed stick, um, the, the inconsistencies of, of the LVMPD's media releases, uh, I think is what has led to a lot of speculation. Oh, you know, they, you know, from the beginning, you know, he shot himself or excuse me. No, we shot him. No, he shot himself. And then oh, yeah. the timeline changing so many times within the first 24 hours to 36 hours, um, that is led to the speculation. So it's kind of hard to not speculate. You know, if, if they would have come straight out and said, you know, we're investigating, we're investigating. And then 24 hours later said, this is what we got, you know, and, and that was another thing we, we were talking about. I don't know if y'all have watched the 11 minutes documentary that, that aired here in the last few days. Uh, pointed stick and I have been, yeah, yeah pointed stick I and I have been that. talking about that. They, uh, they kind of misrepresented that too when they were talking about how the LVMPD handled the situation as far as the press releases and talking about that. They didn't really, uh, they didn't really represent that very well because there were so many inconsistencies. Well, uh, I have several times taken these, these briefings in order and watched them like all in one sitting. And it's like when you watch one after one after one after, you know what I mean? And the order is that they came out. It's like you can see it plain as day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like what, what, I, what I was trying to go with that is like what would what would change if, uh, let's say, um, we find out Campos knocked on the fucking door and started this whole damn operation. You know, what would what would change? Nothing. Nothing's really going to change as far as really anything. I you know, agree with that. You still don't know who Paddock was. Timeline you don't know. of proving people are liars. Well, yeah. We, I mean, we, we, know that we can prove lying, that anyway, but... dude. I mean, you know, you can go through that report and you can contradict that report with right. the, um, uh, the the lock interrogation report that is in the report. So, you know, that timeline as far as the actual time, I, we, I we don't think it to shreds. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it, everything in that report is bogus. <laughs> I think the timeline that they gave was bogus. You know, I think that that is is somebody's speculation on what they think happened <clears throat> based on random parts of evidence. But see, the other thing I have an issue with and, and you know, this is this is something that, that falls into a lot of conspiracy issues is uh, when you hear somebody say something that somebody else said. So, for instance, like uh, somebody says, uh, I have a person that was shot at the Aria, right? for instance, um, I have a person that was shot at the Aria, this person here that's that's been shot. Well, are they, are you actually saying that the person was shot right there in front of you? You know, a lot of people will take that literal verbatim as, Hey, the person was shot right in front of me. Except yeah, well, that you got run? the one where the desk clerk called and said she right. saw, saw the person shot right in front of her. Right. Yeah. See, that's, that's different. And when you, when you have people who say, you know, I heard. And why would you run past all the ambulances and police and people who are willing to take you to the hospital and the yeah. army is really far away. And so is the Paris. I mean, well, yeah, hotels yeah, I that are blocks and blocks, like quarter of a mile, half a mile away. You know, I personally, if I'm shot in the head, I'm not going, oh, look, there's an ambulance. I'm going to keep on running. Really? Well, you know, to, to, you know, to, to push back on that. I mean, you know, just, and it's not that I, I, I disagree with you necessarily. It's just that, you know, um, if you watch the videos of what's going on that night, it was fucking chaos. It was absolute it chaos. Was chaos. And a lot of these ambulances were not helping people, you know, and uh, like they should have, they were scared like everybody else. So, yeah, you know, had ambulances up the street, you know, uh, you know, up by the Paris, you, you know, had them at, you had them at Reno, right? Away, you, know? well, you had them at Hooters too. That, so, that's where the, yeah. that's where all the ambulances were. Yeah. They were all went to Hooters. Hooters. Yeah. And that was, that was a big failure. Of the well, there was night. also, but I think you had more forgets. There was a great deal of ambulances because there was a concert already there. Right, you know, like when you go right. to a high school football game, they always there have three ambulances. Always no, there no, there weren't, there weren't. There weren't. There weren't ambulances. There but were, I think there were more they people had transported said to in the that hospital. Eleven, eleven minute documentary. They interviewed one of the medics that told the number of how many ambulances were already there. Right. Just because it was a concert, and I can't remember the number he said, but it was. Yeah. More well, there's going to be a con- quite a few at every concert, you know, especially one at that size, twenty thousand people. You know, that's a pretty well, good. They job. had their own. They had their own medical tent. They then they had yeah. um, the command post across the street, which uh, I believe was uh, some sort of medical over there, but. Um, you know, but as far as even all the way up to the Aria, you know, when but, you're running past all this health. Well, I think a lot of these people got rides and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know, you know, the exact instance of what you're talking about, but you know, like, um, you know, as far as ambulances being in the concert, they, there was, we got bike camp, we can see it and I don't see any, you know, and that's the problem, you know, and I think that was a major breakdown from this night when the LVMPD likes to come out and say, we did a great job. We did great. No, you fuck it. You guys fucked up. And <clears throat> you know, they even said in one of the body cams, there's a, one of the LVMPD, and he straight up says, "I'm not going in there. I'm not dying for anybody tonight." Yeah. You know, basically, oh, were... straight up, I'm gonna, I'm not here to save anyone. But you're going into good versus bad cops, you know. Clearly appearing across the board with all the police. No. You know? Well, my problem oh, is that okay, it took sorry, them so that long to get to the room. I can understand the cops. You know, they don't let EMS into the venue until they know the venue's safe. I mean, that's kind of a given. 
Right. But with as much time as it took him to get in the room, that bothers me. But yeah. kind of, yeah. I'm kind of okay with the cops and the EMS standing back to the gunfire. Kind of was for sure over. Yeah, they went dodging into that place. I mean, I they think- didn't know if there were shooters on the ground in there. They didn't know what. They just heard shit, you know. Right, yeah. and yeah. you're completely on your own in a situation like that, and that's something that people need to understand. You know, is if something like that is going down, don't think anybody for one second is coming in there to help you or save your life. Yeah, and and also, if were, I, I'm uh, sorry, man, damn it. My friends, I'm sorry. Dang, no, man, no, I just no, can't no, win. Um, no. I, it's my bad. Um, my friends who were on the strip that night, uh, one of them was handicapped. He was in a wheelchair. And when he tells me the story, he says there was a wall of people running at me. And, uh, you know, I basically got shoved into a casino and locked down for four hours. The speculation that was going on in there, just amongst the people who were locked down in the room as to what happened, you know, they didn't even know what was going on. They were talking, oh, the shooters are here. The shooters are over at the Bellagio. The shooters were at the New York, New York. There's shooters all over the place. I, well, I that think that that led. Reporting, yeah. Well, and, and that they were also feeling that on the ground that night on the strip, you know, because of the people just running down the strip. He said it was a wall of people. He thought he was going to die. I mean, he's in a wheelchair. You know, he's disabled. And, you know, my other friend grabbed him and rolled him into whatever casino they were next to at the time. And that's where they stayed for about the next four hours or even longer. And just in inside talking amongst the people, there were so many different stories about what was going on. Nobody really knew. You know, and I think that led to a lot of the reports. And I, I don't know about the REI. I never heard about the, the no, report of a person getting shot in front of a. a yeah. Well, you know, you know- but- <laughs> Who was that one little Spanish kid? He made a whole video. He was wearing like Gio Rios. Rios. Yeah. And, you know, he gives quite a detailed story of a guy inside the Tropicana opening up a black case. Yes. He had a gun, you know, and how the shooting was all, you know. Did he say it was gun? I don't think he ever said it was gun. I think he said the guy had a case and he was like. Yeah, he never said he saw a gun that I remember. So, yeah. Yeah. I've got his whole video in a playlist on my channel. I mean, that could have been a case of diamonds for all we know. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, he did say that they were being shot at over there by the Tropicana. And then you've got that other dude who walked through the back parking lot and saw casings on the ground. You know, and yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the cones, you know, covering casings. Oh, there's casings underneath this cone. So okay, how are you now, over Just... by the Tropicana, you know, under a cone, you know, and guns being found. Oh, you know, is this yours? No, it's not mine. You know, and these are cops having conversations. Oh, hang on to that. You think, you know, so, you know, there's evidence of bullet casings, you know, in multiple different locations. The officers no. up in the Paris. You know, Playing I'm, devil's I'm, advocate in a situation like mm-hmm. that, though, I'm just going to throw this in there. Not that I don't 100% agree with you, is that. When all this gunfire starts going off, you know there's got to be some crazies out there that are going to start popping their guns off in the air like people do on New Year's Eve. That's, yeah, yeah, that's really? that. So some of these shells, <laughs> okay, so I mean, I live, I live near Detroit, and I'm telling you what, New Year's Eve and Fourth of July, you hear guns popping off all over. <laughs> they're not shooting people. They're shooting them in the air, but their casing's got to land somewhere. So there has to have been some nut jobs out there that may really? have been the in reason the Paris gun casing. Yeah, yeah, the, the bathroom, bathroom too. is a little different, but it could have fell out of someone's pocket. Yeah, but you know, really, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I mean, how many people carry guns in Vegas? I'm sure there's quite a few. You know, you got a lot of people from uh, neighboring really. states that. Um, well, I mean, I, I can show you videos of guys who you know are always talking about bringing their guns into those casinos. Yeah, but I, the, believe um, it. I believe it. Yeah, <laughs> but there are some areas that pat you down and check you before you come in. Well, back then, I don't think it was as bad as it is now. I know now they 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 do freak out on that stuff, and you can watch videos of guys that are you know getting caught by security with their you know with their uh, concealed carry stuff. Right. But um, you know, thing is, like I said, a lot of this you know it bends on speculation. I don't know if you guys saw the video I did a while back of a, a place over here called Knott's Berry Farm. Not to talk yeah, about there. here, but Knott's Berry Farm, right? So this is a theme park, mm-hmm. and about a half a mile away is a McDonald's. Now, Knott's Berry Farm is in a gang territory for the most part. It's yeah. not a really heavily active gang, but nevertheless, it is. And, um, you know, it's kind of uh, in the area I grew up in. And so, you know, over there uh, by Knott's Berry Farm, there was a shooting. Kid got shot at a McDonald's. Now, it's McDonald's. Mm-hmm. It's half a block away, like literally half a block away, probably half a mile. This dude came from, went from McDonald's to the front gate of Knott's Berry Farm. Now, that's not a half mile. That's, you know, probably... 300 yards. And uh, he, he limped over there because he figured, well, not Sperry Farms got security. There's, it's safer over there than it is in front of this McDonald's where he's probably going to get shot again. And uh, it was a drive by. Somebody, you know, driving by him, shot at him and, and actually hit him. And so this kid ends up in front of Knott's Berry Farm. Well, people in the back of this theme park started freaking the fuck out because all of a sudden there was, oh my God, there's a shooter inside the park. There's a shooter inside the park. Everyone started freaking the fuck out. And you can't hear the gunshots from that area. It's a theme park for Christ's sake. There's roller, it's, it's known for roller coasters, right? So they're fucking loud. And people that had no fucking clue what was going on, had no fucking contact with this person whatsoever within 
five minutes were running for their fucking life, thinking that somebody was in this park shooting, right? And that was the narrative that these people had. So I'm sure there's plenty of, you know, well, I'm surprised it's it's a small park. Otherwise, if it was a big theme park somewhere, then there'd probably be conspiracies running around. There was a shooter inside the park. They don't want to talk about it, whatever. But see, that's the kind of problem that I run into when I hear all this stuff about shooters of the casinos. How much of that? Now, see, I'm not saying that they're, I'm not discounting all of them because I, I won't do that, but because I wasn't there, they were. But how much of that was just panic? How much of it legit was panic? Because yeah, no, panic isn't calling as an employee and, you know, from multiple different locations talking about people being shot right out right there. You know, yeah, see, that's and different. Like, that's yeah, it's also like kind of a, you know, a far reach for me that there's a big shooting going on. And during the shooting, you're going to pull out your own gun and be like, pa, 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 in, in the air. Oh, I don't doubt up and down shirts. Sure I, I don't doubt the fucking. Uh, I mean, this isn't the Fourth of July or something. This is, you know, a panic situation. With I don't doubt some gangbangers would have been driving up the strip, going, "Oh yeah, going, yeah, so us. yeah." I mean, up the strip, yeah, but yeah. right there next to the venue, and then also in the Tropicana parking lot, which is next to the venue, and you know, the Paris inside bathroom. It, I mean, how ironic would everybody just be to be like, bah, 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 during well, "No, the Paris bathroom is weird," and I believe that was a full. Uh, that wasn't just a casing. I believe that was an actual bullet, wasn't it? Uh, I believe it was a casing, but oh, I, I thought it was a loaded round, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly because I know that's uh, yeah, it's incredibly out. ironic. And probably. I believe that was like a nine millimeter or something. I don't even think that was a uh, uh, a rifle round, if I remember right. Not sure. I would expect it to be something smaller caliber because I would expect that to come out of a handgun. That's very yeah. ironic, though, that all these different locations. How ironic! All in the same evening, all within the same ta same time frame. You know, to be finding all these casings or a bullet. You know. Well, I mean, how many of them were found? I mean, that was one. I know that, you know, about the Paris bathroom. But what else are you talking about? Because I'm, I'm talking sure. about the body worn camera where they've got, you know, casings underneath the cone, you know, and the I'm sheriff, that, or the officers that pick up a gun and ask each other, is it yours? Is it yours? You know, no, that they, was that was no, that's you're talking about the Hoover video that I fucking slammed. No, on. I'm not talking about the Hoover video. I did a video on it. OK, well, that was OK. So if if you go back about 30 seconds before that, that issue, because you, you're talking about the cops that are sitting behind the wall that actually start picking up bullet shells off of the ground. No. No? I'm talking okay. about they're standing over there by that Catholic church between the Tropicana and the venue, and they've got casings under a cone. And oh, the, officer that, the other that. officer who walks up, he says, don't touch that cone. There's casings underneath it. And then I'm talking about the other officer who picks up some kind of rifle, and he's on the back side of the venue closer to the tanks. Yeah. And so he picks up a gun and asks another officer, is this your gun? And the other officer says, no, it's not mine. And he says, OK, hang on to that. And, you know, so and then there's another like Spanish kid who in a white T-shirt. So as he's running out of the venue, he picks up a handgun off of the ground and there's communication between the people, the crowd around him. And they say, is that your gun? Or, you know, pick up that gun. And so he's like, I got it. And so, that's, so that's he's running with the handgun in his hand. Where'd you see that one? Or is that a statement? I have <laughs> no, I have a video of it. Oh, I did a video, video of all, you know, quite a few, quite a bit of these little, you know, that's the thing. My channel just gets like zero views. <laughs> well, I mine does too. I watch yours. <laughs> You're not. He's got some good account. videos over there, pointed stick. You might want to like just go through some of them. I think I pissed off just about everybody at this point. But yeah, um, me too. Well, you haven't pissed us off bad enough. We're here. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I did at one point. A good discussion. You this did. Is a redemption uh, uh, stream here. But, You're just uh, lucky. I really wanted to like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand that still. But the. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I'd have to see what you're talking about exactly, because a lot of the stuff you're talking about, I'm, I'm not really even sure where that came from. So I don't I don't really have any information on that. I can't I can't comment on shit like that. But I'm, I'll say this, man. Like, how many people how many people you think brought guns to Vegas that weekend? A like, lot, how, but not inside that venue, because I think well, it got checked, but just in Vegas in general. You don't think anybody got a gun inside that venue? Oh, I would sure think so. Oh, yeah. Sure. Because there's I've some people that won't survivors leave there. say that they got patted down really good, and other ones that say they just let them walk right in. Yeah, yeah. I've walked so in many venues. that it was a country yeah. type thing, it's like, I'm sure there's people that got them in there. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, think I mean, they shot anybody. You know, I don't think they were killers or anything, but I'm sure they got them in. They yeah. Well, yeah. not on top of that, you had just about every cop in the city converging with every firearm they could on that area of las vegas when that happened I, I don't think it would you know if somebody was concealed carrying inside of the venue and was hauling ass for their lives and dropped it i don't think they're going to stop and turn around and go back you know that just kind of what process so, I, I mean i mean i know this is speculation me. and i know nick you told me the other night i wouldn't know i don't know we don't know how we're going to act unless we're in the situation okay but you being a gun guy and you living in the atmosphere where you people pack, would you really not go back and get your gun? 
not in a situation like that. Okay. That's if I'm like being you, shot at, the first yeah, thing I'm that's trying like to do is get to cover. Yeah. Zone in Afghanistan, right. and you drop okay. a gun. It's like you're yeah. going with your group wherever. It's like, okay. You're you're if trying you go to get back to cover. And get the gun, you're gonna die. You don't yeah. stop and turn around and do whatever. Right. You're 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 trying to right. get to cover yeah. wherever that cover is, and right. you know okay. at that just point just, you you probably don't know where the shots are coming from, anyways. So what are you going to return fire at? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to return fire at at that point with a handgun from four or five hundred yards? Right. Okay. Just asking. Yeah. Thank you. We went way no problem. That one. All right, I'm crawling back out of the rabbit hole again. Hey. <laughs> I am the rabbit hole. No, I'm just kidding. Which no, way do you want to go back, Twin and Stick? Sorry if we got you all off track. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all okay. Good. Okay. No, I mean, uh, no, it's all good. I, I didn't think we're going to go into that, uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of uh, direction, but it's all good. It's all good. Right. Okay. I mean, you know, I was just, like I said, to me, it's it's always curious, like, um, you know, what, what would... Um, what are you looking for? Right. So that's, that's my thing. Like, what are you looking for here? You know, because me personally, you know, I, I told my little story, you know, I was looking for two people that died, found one succeeded on that. The other one, I have no fucking clue who the fuck it is. And it's driving me nuts. But, um, you know, I don't think I'm ever gonna get those answers, at least not something I'm gonna be, you know, um, I'm gonna be con confident in. So, you know, I kind of gave up on all that. The, uh, but, to me, to, to fix this whole thing, right? And I, I used to say this to Hunter all the time when he's around, is if you find the motive, everything will fall into place. You know, that's all you got to have is the motive. If you have the motive, you're going to understand why this guy did it. You're going to understand if he had help doing this, if there's anybody else that might have been involved in this. Right. At least if you have a motive that makes sense that you could um, believe. Right. You know? and, and that's part of my problem is I don't buy what they're saying. You know, here's Mr. Nice Guy who would give money and help out, you know, even his employees, you know, or friends in general, you know, or his family. And, you know, so you got Mr. Nice Guy, like you listen to the first Eric Paddock videos, you know, he says, you know, oh, my brother, I can't even imagine what a nice guy. He's always helping everybody out, you know. Well, everyone's going to say that. And then goes, you know, right into immediately, you know, oh, yeah, he did it, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. where that's where things so, differ, right? Yeah. You know, everyone's going to come out and say, oh, he was, because they do that. And you, you can yeah. look at so pretty anyway, much any case. Oh, he was yeah. quiet. He was a great neighbor. Oh, he was, he would help me out all the time, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, I do something fucking evil. Yeah. And, well, it's just not enough for me for him to, you know do all of this when he's Mr. Nice Guy and flip just because he ha lost a few times at MGM. I don't you think know. he's Mr. Nice Guy at all. I mean, I don't think he ever was even before this, you know, I just, you know, uh, I, you know, even that, that 11 minutes documentary kind of painted him as a prick that didn't get along with anybody. Which guy? You know, uh, Paddock. Yeah. But you know, I would, if you're not a nice guy, I know if I'm not a nice guy, I'm not going to give my friends and family money and do all this and that for them. Well, it's right. your family. It's different when it's your family, but you know, I mean, and your friends, I, I don't fucking know. I think he was family members who have written off other family members just because they didn't like a Facebook post. So. Yeah. Yeah. But not every family's like that. And so like, yeah. you know, the thing is, um, you know, I looked up at one point, I did this uh, a while back and I never even put it public. I don't think, uh, his brother-in-law Okamoto, I believe, uh, Okamoto was his uh, what, second wife or something like that. Or Peggy's it... new husband. No, no. Before the husband. No, I'm just talking about when was he married to Peggy? Peggy was, uh, he was married to her the second time. Was she the second, second wife? Uh, whatever. Anyway, so he was married to Peggy Okamoto, and uh, her brother. That was the last name of her next husband. I'm pretty sure, wasn't it? Was it? I think I thought, so. I thought that was. Her I'd name. have to go back and dig through. My I'm papers. pretty sure that's her actual last name. You know. Um, I thought, Maybe I don't and, remember. I mean, it's been five years, so it's like yeah, yeah. my memory. I so, have to go dig yeah, through mine's no better research either. Research to find it. But if you look up uh, Grand Central Apartments in. Um, Texas, I think it was Grand Central Apartments in Texas. Um, you find the lawyer uh, who, or well, the, he's now, I think he's now a real estate lawyer. Back then he wasn't a real estate lawyer. He was actually a real estate agent of some sort. Um, and this guy was setting up the LLCs for uh, Central Park Apartments LLC, I believe his group uh, six Paddock was a part of, something like that. And if you go down this guy's listings, you look at uh, all the different groupings that he's got. He's got LLC, you know, Group whatever, Grand Central LLC, Group Six, Group One, Group Two, Group Three, and I believe it was like Group Four or something like that. Had and a, a guy named uh, Okamoto. Thought that was interesting. That's a weird name. So I looked the guy up. He's out here in Torrance, California, right? Which really isn't too far from Peggy because Peggy's out in Cerritos, and um, you know, and I, if I remember right, he's like her cousin or some shit like that, or brother-in-law or some. I don't know. He was somehow related, and um, but he was also on the uh, LLCs for this uh, Grand Central Apartments. Um, he had one of the LLCs within that. So that means that, you know, Paddock was doing deals with these people, right? He's buying property with these people. You know, uh, this guy owned property out there in Texas with Paddock. So, you know, is that how he's helping people out? You know, is he, is he doing some shady real estate, you know, stuff with, with these people? But so I think he was helping people out. I just don't know if it was a selfless act. 
Well, if you go back through, I don't know if you researched all those real estate transactions, but a lot of them switched with family members and extended family members and friends. And, you know, they always say that gambling and real estate are good ways to launder money. Yeah. And yeah. Right. IRS, man, yeah. We want to pay capital gains taxes. So a lot of those relatives of hers that you were seeing, if there was real estate going back and forth. I think that they had a whole thing going on where they were transferring stuff and you have to wait two and a half years or two years before you have to pay capital gains tax again. And it's like, there was a ton of properties when you lay them all out that got transferred, family members, friends, family members, friends, and it all circled back around. And I think there was some cooperation money hiding going on there or tax oh. evasion, maybe not money hiding, but you know what I'm saying? Possibly. But that's did how all he, that real estate. He was making money on real estate, you know, doing stuff like that. And, um, you know, that was always interesting to me that he had his 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 family involved in, in some of his real estate stuff. And I don't know if you ever looked up that one place that I told you where he bought this uh, place out in, I believe, L.A., Hollywood area somewhere, where it was like one point two million. And then he sold it a week later. Or actually, I think it was two months later. He sold it for like one point seven to these people, you know, and it had the, the listing of the realtor and it also had the listing of um, the um the dude that bought it, the dude that paid for it. And, uh, you know, and then he goes out and he buys another house. Like, I don't know, I forget if it was a year later or something like that, but he sells it to the same people, you know, at a, at another gain. And I think that one he made like two, 200 grand on or something like that. I think the first one he made like 400 grand on or something like that. So to me, that's interesting. Like, I mean, I guess you could say he was flipping houses. Maybe. Oh yeah. He was a house right. flipper. You I know, mean, but, you go through his real estate transactions and there's no way he moved that many times. So he definitely, especially when you look at the dates, in the short periods of time before the flippings, that it's like he was definitely but buying it's crazy to me. for profit. It's crazy to me that you you would you would sell to the same person, you know, because not because they were playing the capital gains game. Huh. Yeah, but I mean, you, you sold it at a you know, so so somebody's you know paying an exorbitant amount of money to him, and then those two people, the people he sold that to, you know, the only thing I could find on them was there was a court case saying that they were being. Uh, racially biased uh towards a family that was trying to uh, rent one of their properties out in, in los angeles but um, that was the only thing i found on on those two. and it was actually those two it was the realtor along with this uh the buyer so you know but to me it's always interesting when you have a guy that sells a house and then goes up to the same people and says hey you want to buy you, you want to buy another one you know give me some more money it's just that's weird so you know there was something shady going on with a lot of that but i think you know personally to me you know who was paddock you know that's that's the question that I think needs, <laughs> needs the answer, is who is Paddock? You know, and I think a lot of things will fall into place if you. Ten oh five. What? Ten oh five. Now Michelle oh, was live. Dude. I was watching her on TikTok, and she ended. She had to go pick up her kids from work. Oh, I was just gonna say maybe we could share the screen real quick. Well, she, her her live ended, and I keep checking. I'm not sure if she's like gonna go live again or if she's done because she had to get out of there. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't do TikTok, man. I, I, I don't normally do it, I mean, but I did have an account just to look up stuff. So um, I had her link. So I had her live put up because she, she was texting me a little while ago. And I got her link from her and she told me she was going on. But she did say she had to leave to pick up kids. So and it is right now exactly 10 05. Yeah, 10 06 now. 10 06 now. But yeah, the. Um, yeah, to me, it's, you know, that's that's the main thing. It's like, who is Paddock? If you find out who Paddock was, you might find a motive. And then, you, <laughs> you know, know I there. think that's, I'm just sitting here listening to you guys talk about that. And I think that would be incredibly helpful for me. Because otherwise, I I mean, I've given up. I don't have no proof for the shit that comes out of my mouth about it. You know, okay. I, I don't know what happened. I, I'm never going to know what happened. I'm just going to have to, like, you know, I've moved on from it. I mean, I, I do enjoy going to your streams when I can't sleep at night. I do look for you sometimes, too. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I've come this close going, can you fucking go live tonight? Because I'm like, can't sleep. But yeah. then I go in and sidetrack because I know I you're on your, your thing. I had a really good time one night with you, though. Um, uh -oh. Yep, I did. You were, I sidetracked you, though. Once rumors. It was, I know. Ooh. Um, you were showing... You were showing some stuff on your screen. It wasn't one of the report. No, it was. It was a report. And the lady was saying how her and her son had went to eat. And it was either a Denny's or a something else. And I was kind of thinking in my head, oh, gosh, I wish he could pull the map up and let's look for it. But when you're doing your streams, like you're on topic. And I come in and chat and then I get you off topic. <laughs> That's all right. This it's time right. it was really cool because you actually, you said, well, let's just look for it now. And 
we looked at the restaurants that were right there and we had a pretty cool discussion about it. Yeah, there's a Denny's, uh, I think it's like right across the street from it. We found it. We found the right one that night. It coincided with the report you were reading. Yeah, there's like McDonald's over there and I think there's a Denny's right there if I remember right. Oh, I I think think it was Denny's real quick. Since right now we're actually in the middle of Paddock's shooting, I think we should do like a moment or a minute of silence. Yeah. Because it's 10.08 and he's going to shoot for a little while longer and it's the anniversary, which was the purpose of our stream, kind of. Right. Right. Would you like to lead us in prayer pointed stick? (laughs) Yeah, I'm not a prayer guy. Yeah. I know. Hey, I'll do one. Okay. (laughs) I'm not really a prayer person either. (laughs) I was raised super Southern Baptist, though. But I've researched religion since then because I was looking for the right answer. (laughs) And so, to me, they're all pretty much the same and it's always about indoctrination and uh, you know, your team is, you know, so you're, so you're bagging on religion before you do a prayer. <laughs> you're going to do, yeah, that's her do style. the damn prayer, girl. <laughs> do the prayer. <laughs> but anyway, it's not do about the your damn team. prayer. Not about your team. Okay. <laughs> do the damn prayer. All right. So dearest heavenly father, thank you for this blessed day. Thank you for the wonderful joys you've given us today and the unity of family, you know, with this group of people, you know, we have a lot of questions in life. Um, you know, we appreciate you bringing us the knowledge and the wisdom and the ability to look past, you know, every angle and, you know, find the truth for ourselves. Um, I'm incredibly grateful to have been, made it through this hurricane, you know, and been safe through it. Um, and I'm incredibly grateful that so many pe- people survived the nightmare of, you know, 10 one, the Vegas shooting on this blessed day, Lord, we are so grateful for the people who survived and the recoveries that a lot of them have made. Um, you know, and we pray for your, you know, ability and willingness to give us, you know, the knowledge and the power and the enlightenment, you know, of your glory, Lord, and, you know, helping those people continue to heal this day, you know, and helping them, you know, get past it. And for the ones that are there, you know, and feeling it, you know, live right now, you know, and remembering it, have, you know, give them some release, give them, you know, your compassion and love and help them feel safe again. And, you know, dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for another day of life and grateful for those people who survived and who are able to recover. So with all of that, thanks, God, you know, whatever you may be, (laughs) greater power than myself. Thank you for this day, Lord. And, you know, give everyone mercy and kindness and love and joy and, you know, count your little blessings, you know, of every breath is so important. Every minute of life, so important, you know, and speak your truth and, you know, protect us all and give us more days of blessings, Lord. And uh, with that, I'm going to say thanks a bunch <laughs> and amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. And may the 60 people die rest in peace. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And may their families be comforted tonight because I know that this anniversary every year is not a celebration for them. I mean, they're just, I know it. they got to be sad. And it's just, that's heartbreaking to lose a loved one in something so horrific as this. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Every year. It's absolutely yeah. horrible. Thank you, Angelica. No problem. Sorry, it's not perfect. <laughs> You don't have no, we're not perfect. My heart. It came to my heart and my head at the moment. So. That's what's important. And that's you what I think is primarily my heart, you know, and that's why I got so involved, you know, was what, after listening to the, all the hours of the 9-11 call, uh, not, yeah, 911 call, you know, mm-hmm. my heart and I could not sleep at night. Those phone calls rang out in my head over and over and over again. And then I threw down my headphones and I cried. I was mm. so angry and hurt. You know, I just literally lost my shit. My heart was mm-hmm. broken for these people. You know, yeah. and I genuinely feel that those people on those calls have not been heard, will not be heard. And I know if it was my voice on those calls, I would have wanted to be been heard. You mm-hmm. know, and these people are seriously adamant with some serious description. You know, it's not stuff you just, oh, I was panicking. No, I'm sorry. You know, and these were security guards. These were employees. These were the victims, the family members. You know, there's just too many stories. It's not one or two. You know, there's right. hundreds. So, you know, and these people aren't being heard, you know, and that's why I got involved. I didn't have a YouTube channel. You know, I feel like fuck the fucking media and all its social bullshit, you know, call it Facebook, call it Instagram. The only account I have social media in was Facebook prior to this. I didn't even want to do that until I moved away and a friend was like, please, God, get on Facebook so I can stay in touch with you. So, I, you know, and I hate it and I shit on it every single fucking day. I've never been to Facebook jail and I give zero fucks. You know, I say what I want, what I, what my heart tells me. And what I believe in my, you know, probably the hardest dumb blonde you will ever meet. You know, I am not, you know, super indoctrinated, you know, because I grew up in the punk scene and everything was anarchy. 
you know, and I just grew up in it, you know, and I've been doing this crap for years. You know, I have my vote a hundred times, you know, went Democrat, went independent, went Republican, went back forth, back forth, you know, and I barely vote. Because ever since 9-11 happened, I was like, this is a fucking shit show, dude. And nothing matters. And look who was in place during that shit show. You know, a, a Republican, you know? And so it's like, it doesn't matter. You know, they're both evil wings of the same bird. You got the left wing, you got the right wing. But they're still part of the same corrupt bird. So, you know, for me, that's where I got so involved. My heart was in it from the minute I saw the reports. I was like, this is a shit show. He's changing his mind. He doesn't know what the heck. How can you investigate the whole entire strip, which was what needed to be done? You know, one and a half hours. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. change your narrative a hundred times and look like you're being intimidated as crap by the stupid FBI guy who's staring you down your neck. Oh, that was kind of sad. You know, so from the minute I got involved with this, which I didn't plan on getting involved. I'm not like, I got, you know years of content on YouTube. I only did my basic ass bullshit. I can't get fancy. I ain't got time for no app or, you know, I'm going to edit. Right. My you know, fuck it. I record my screen and, you know, yep. I show it as rare and as raw as possible. Yeah. You know, I don't fabricate. This is shit that has made my mind up in a different narrative than the average Joe, just because it smells like crap from the go, you know, and, and it's been crap ever since, you know, and so for me, something ain't right. And that's all I know. You know, and I have done enough investigating in this crap. I've been there at least four years. This was, I guess, going to be my fifth. And, you know, I've walked all over the damn place. Nobody stops me. You know, right. the Tropicana is dark as shit at night behind the building. There are no cameras back there. So literally you can walk up the staircase, which I've done at least twice and videotaped, you know, where we see someone running across the roof, you know, oh yeah, right, right after the shooting and the helicopter goes by. You know, so that's like CCTV footage, you know, and I'm literally up there twice with a backpack. I could have been, a, you know, all in black because I always wear black, you know, so I could have looked like, you know, a terrorist and nobody stopped me. You know, no one ever stops me. I was I, shocked. I was shocked seeing you. With a GoPro camera on my chest, you know, so I'm walking through the casino in the gaming rooms. Nobody's stopping me. You know, they don't know. Is that on? Is it off? You know, I don't know. They don't, nobody has ever, not once, stopped me. So to me, that's scary as shit. That I'm going to go up into a tourist place. You know, I got Walt Disney World right here in my back backyard. I worked there for five years. So, you know, you want to, those places aren't safe, you know, in Vegas, 100% not safe. You know, you, like what we're talking here tonight is, you know, walking around inside casinos with guns, you know? Mm -hmm. and so, you know, for me, I'm sorry, it smells like crap, you know, and it's not adding up. It doesn't make any sense. You know, this guy's 60 some plus years old. Is he really going to be all that stupid? No. You know, and he's had legit jobs like at Lockheed Martin and for the post office and this and that, you right, know, IRS. And FBI payroll, you know, whatever. You know, this isn't some idiot who's going to half-ass plan something in his loafers with garden gloves, you know, and leave shit all over the room, you know, debris underneath it, uh, you know. So who threw down that gun after the door was exploded? How'd that debris, I mean, I get it, maybe could have scooted, you know, I mean, you can speculate. Under the leg. Leg. But there's just too much stuff that just doesn't add up, you know, and then all these people who call, you know. Hey, Yay, it's Mario time. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, you know, it's just for me, I have a million questions and, you know, yeah, you know, if it was maybe 50 people who all said something different on those 911 calls, maybe, but we got hundreds, you know, so That's, I've been there, yeah. it's not safe. I mean, you can walk all over that place and be a bad guy and get away with it. So, you know, it's scary as crap. What the last year, not last year, two years ago, I was there. I had three different people because I'm a smoker. I have to go outside sometimes to smoke different locations telling me that they had been held up by gunpoint on the strip and their personal wallet and items taken off of them by people because of the map and kept, every single one of them i was like did you get a description of who this person was and right I, you know they were like i don't know i'm not going to say a color but they had a mask on you know so in the description what are you going to say i mean even me you know blonde girl light eyes had a mask on so that's right like, you're not seeing somebody's whole face so in three times three times in one of my visits two years ago there was you know multiple holdups on the strip by just being a tourist walking down the strip, you know, That's so that crazy. place is not safe. I mean, and if I can go walk up on, you know, the roofs of these hotels with a backpack and yeah. nothing, nothing. And I'm up there videotaping. I know. Doo -doo -doo. It's not like I'm running up and running back down. I'm like, doo -doo -doo. let me make a video while I'm up here. <laughs> you know? Plus I got to catch my breath because I run up the stairs. And I'm like, I don't know how you do all that walking. That's why before when I was going to go, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do it because yeah of my leg pain at that time. I don't know how I would have done it. Now I'll be able to totally do it. You want to go with me? Let me know. Yeah, it is a lot of walking. Yeah. And yeah. I'm walking really affordably, you know, like I was staying at the Luxor and I was going to be there six nights. So seven mm -hmm. days, six nights, oh, yeah. $330. 
We're not gonna well, we that. priced it out before because I had already paid for mm -hmm. everything, remember? Right. And it wasn't that none, the trip for me. I mean, I don't go on vacations or anything like that anyway. So it wasn't, it was affordable for me to go. Yeah. And there's ways of cheating even with the food because the portions are so huge. Yeah. That, you know, literally I was like by, you know, a meal for lunch. I don't eat all day anyway. Half of it home, you know, or pack it in my backpack. And, you know, like, yeah. I do a lot of subs and shit, you know, that mm -hmm. I can cut in half and then eat half. And then I like dinner. Yeah. All, all I care I about is coffee, coffee and dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Gordon Ramsay's fish and chips. Super yeah. affordable. Surprisingly, you, I got like a lobster tail. Uh, shrimp palm, you know, shrimp with it and some kind of white fish with mm -hmm. truffle fries. And it was literally like 20 bucks. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I like the good, like the good dinners, you know. I'm not going to tell you what I spent last time I was there. 20 bucks. <laughs> just what, hardly me. anything or a bunch? <clears throat> well, I was, uh, I was dating someone that was considered a high roller in Vegas. Oh, and, uh, okay, okay. And so she, um, we went to, uh, and I don't know if you, we, we stayed in a room that was exactly like Paddock's. Uh, I got video footage of it all over the place, but um, we were doing some stuff, messing around in there. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, I don't want to say any names, but we had some visitors too uh, from in here. And, um, you know, it was a double bedroom. It was basically the same layout that he had, except that um, where the couch and all that stuff was supposed to, was, was in his room. It was... Um, uh, it was a second bedroom. So there were bedrooms on both sides. And uh, it was interesting. I mean, uh, for, I think it was an hour, it was an hour and I forget, 20 minutes or something. We left the door open. We just left it open. We, we hit the deadbolt and we left the damn thing open. Nobody uh -huh. said a word. Nobody called us. Nobody bothered us. And, uh, and I was actually live streaming at the time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you guys know I was there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I was right. live streaming at the time. So I even mentioned it in there. I'm like, hey, look at that. That's been open for like an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> and no one said shit. So, um, but yeah, we went over there. And um, actually, no, that was the other time we went over there. Yeah, that was the other time. We went to um, the place in the Flamingo. And, you know, Flamingo, for being a little bit of a ghetto hotel, you'd be surprised, man. Mm -hmm. um, they have a really fancy restaurant down there. And uh, I think it's called like... Um, uh, Myers, Meyer Lansky's or something. Or Myers, no, not Lansky. It's someone else, but it's a couple of mobsters' names. And um, shit, man, that was uh, between two of us. It was like six hundred bucks, and then uh, it was comped because, of course, you know. Of you course. Anything. And then, right. um, but how much money she's throwing on those machines? I don't want to. I don't want to even ask. And then, um, you know, uh, then we went to uh, the Gordon Ramsay Steak. It's called. I think yeah. it's called. Uh, I think it's spelled wrong. S T A K E or S T A E K or something like that. Um, but went there, man, and that was seven hundred bucks. For two of us, I was wow. like, Jesus, man, this is fucking yeah, that's insane. spendy. Yeah, that's so, so I don't spend that kind of money. It's food, man. And we went to the uh, we that actually even went to the maybe. foundation room. The interesting thing about the foundation room, and this is another thing, is uh, you know, when you're up there, you're on top of the Manly Bay. This is like the top mm -hmm. tier of the Manly Bay. That concert looks like way closer than you would expect, you know. Um, I brought a thousand yards, that's yeah, what everybody me, says. That and um, uh, so nobody say we're up there. there, we're up there standing on the roof, you know. Uh, he was up there with me and I, I, I asked him, I said, you know, you think someone could do this? Like, this looks really close. Right. And he's like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. He's like, now that I see this, fuck yeah. Like, you could definitely fucking, you know, start dropping rounds down in there and hit all kinds of people. Because it's, it's really, know, I mean, scary close. It, that might change my mind, too. You know, I need to see it, like, at night in front of it. I want to totally, like, inspect what I see, you know? Yeah, if you can get up into the, uh, the uh, foundation room, because like I said, that's even, like, I don't know how many floors above his, you know, what, nine floors or some crazy shit like that. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's actually higher than he was. And you look down on that venue, you're like, holy shit, dude, this is a lot closer than it looks in those photos. Right. Closer. It's crazy. You know, and so, you know, because we're looking at little photos, you know, on our cell phones or on tablets. or Exactly. On yeah. Screens. We're not there. Per se. It's, it's shrunk down. So to us, it looks like, wow, that's really far away. But no, no, it's, it's not far at all, man. It's, it's scary how close that is. And it's, it's kind of scary imagining like, oh, my God, this guy, I mean. <clears throat> Yeah, you can see the whole venue. It's right there in front of you. It's 400 yards or whatever it was is not that far, you know, for as far as sight line goes. Now, guns, I'm not a gun guy, so that's not my thing. But, yeah, it's kind of, it's it's freaky. It's freaky. And then, um, you know, I walked around the venue a bunch of times, uh, you know, hit the the little Melissa Ramirez area over there, went there a couple mm -hmm. times. Um, walked through the Mandalay Bay, filmed all kinds of shit in the Mandalay Bay. I got all kinds of footage of that. But um, I don't usually show it because it's got people I know in it. Um, right. The people I was with, for some reason, nobody likes to walk behind me. They all like to walk in front of me. So, yeah, whatever. Um, so there were issues with that. So that 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 video, that footage I had to cut up. And I think I did do a video and I showed a bunch of it. But yeah, I had to cut all that up. And, you know, I even went where the cops were. Um, 
I forget what what the names of the cops were that they were sitting there behind the little brick wall there in the in the garden in front of the Manly Bay, and they're saying, you know, we can see it coming out of a window. It's you know whatever oh. north of Mandalay Bay, you know. Um, you think that that was that disco ball thing up there? No, no, they were looking at the shooter, and oh, okay. um, you know because they were looking up. You could see the room from there, and um, and then that's also the area where uh, the people at the bus stop were, I guess, you know, supposedly. And uh, they said oh, they, yeah. glass. Mm -hmm. they said they were hanging out by the waterfall, and then the glass started coming down, and all that sort of stuff. You know, um, right? So that's that's that little area. So I walked around that. Nobody ever goes in there. That's like, I, don't know. I didn't see anybody there the whole time I was there. I think one family walked by me. It's like, oh, that was weird. But I went during COVID, for Christ's sake. So it's like there weren't a lot of people there, you know, in Vegas. Yeah, mm -hmm. I went up in there. I've got pictures and videos up in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's interesting. I mean, uh, you know, and then. Uh, we did the walk through, uh, you know, the parking garage to the elevator bank to the check-in desk, and then I, I eventually found where he checked in at because that was always bothering me that I could never find where he actually checked in at. Yeah. That uh, that room is a little strange, and mm -hmm. um, you know where you check in at Manley Bay is not that room, right. and um, but there is a room off to the side saying uh, <laughs> it's, uh, something like private check-in area or something like that. And you yeah. open that door and there it is, man. There's those ugly looking lamps and shit that you see in the video. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's where that was. Um, so, I mean, to me, there were, there were all kinds of little questions when I was looking at video and stuff like that. Like, where's this, where's that, that doesn't look right and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to debunk most of my own stuff, you know, when I'm, when I'm saying, well, this check-in area is not the Manly Bay. This ain't the Manly Bay. This ain't where the VIPs check in, which it's not. It's the private fucking room off to the side. Yeah. Well, the other, where the VIPs check in. yeah. Something I discovered while I was there was when I went to the parking garage, Chris and I, uh, we walked all the way up the parking garage anyway to that lower roof level where the ladder is or the stairs. Not really mm -hmm. stairs uh, yeah, it's more of a ladder attached to the side of the parking garage and how you could run out onto the roof, which isn't very far to get to the edge, you know, closest to the venue. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when we came back down out of the parking garage, like I noticed there was an elevator there. And instead of walking back down the parking garage, you know, we took the elevator and we didn't know exactly which level because it was like kind of coded different you yeah. know, the guest elevators. And so like, you know, we just hit the bottom one, you know, thinking, oh, this is going to take us out to the- Oh, and you ended up in the basement? And we ended up in the basement, yeah. The black floor. <laughs> and like we walked, you know, like, like the, the hallway. Black floor. And so, yeah, and nobody stopped us. Like tons of employees walking past us in the elevator with us, you know, watching us come out, watching us like look around, like, where do we go? What are we doing? Where are we at? You know? Yeah, when I was there- um... so, you know, That's my problem with like the whole Mandalay Bay is the lack of security. The lack yeah, of- Yeah, I noticed you know, that. Where you could go wherever you wanted, pretty much on the roof. You know, uh, yeah. you know, down into the you know lower levels. You know where Paddock was. You know, coming in those service elevators. You know, it looked the same way. All right, Matt. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Matt. When I was there, uh, he's not gonna say anything. Uh, when I was there, the security, you know, were like a bunch of young kids, and it didn't look like they were spending all that much on their security. You know, yeah. and that was that was COVID times. You know, but um, yeah, they, it was. Um, like I said they looked like they were probably 18, first job ever. Good night, everyone. All right. Good night, Matt. Matt. Good night, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for coming by, man. Yeah, that's that was cool. Bringing your voice to the conversation. No yeah. problem. <laughs> Everybody have a good night. All right, good Matt. Matt. But you know, so uh, yeah, I noticed the security was like really young and looked very inexperienced in that place. That was uh, to me that was interesting. Yeah. I mean, sure. I didn't really walk around that much. People were looking at me funny because I was trying to walk around to the uh, the lower level down there. And I was kind of walking around and people were like, hey, what are you doing here? Because I was the only one there. I was all by myself. Like, there's nobody down there. Yeah. And uh, I think there's the uh, the Uber pickup is down there. So, um, you know, that's where I was heading. But I was you know, just kind of wandering around down there trying to figure out uh, where things were on the lower level. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do much because I don't do sketchy stuff like that. I'm not going to go, you know, kind of um, – well, I'm not going to get my friend in trouble for, uh, you know, walking around, uh, getting trespassed from Manly Bay. That's my uh, right. like, blonde power is I just act like, oh, my gosh, really? Oh, my God. By the way, I she's so funny. Where the hell I'm at. Oh, my God. Where's the, where's the casino at? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so they eat it. You know? And you're like, oh, she's stupid. Let's lead her out. You know? <laughs> yeah, I just, Let's lead her out. I don't, yeah. I don't do the sketchy behavior. So I, I, um, I call, <laughs> call it sketchy. I call it blonde, super blonde power. Yeah, no. <laughs> super blonde power. And I've been through the Tropicana many times. I think I walked through that last time too. But, you know, I mean, Tropicana is what it is, man. I mean, um, you know, to me, that's not a big, big issue. You know, as far as Tropicana goes, yeah, if there was a shooter there, I don't, I don't fucking know. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, that Tropicana thing is, is just a whole nother can of worms. But Absolutely. like I said, my only thing is, you know, I just always want to know. I like, you know, we need a motive. They should have a motive for Christ's yeah. sake. Yeah. Outside uh, of, you know, oh, I was just upset with the MGM. Yeah, he's just a stressed <laughs> out dude, man. Just decided to start shooting people. Um, right. you know, but we need a you know motive on top of that. And then, you know, it's funny that like 
any information relating to him. Like you think about it, like we don't have anybody that actually talked to him while he was there. How many people do you think he talked to while he was there? I mean, we got on video that he talked to the people that he was checking in with. Oh, that's one they, they ignored me completely. I said, I want the, um, the statements of the people he checked in with. No, I can't get in that. Um, I didn't even get a reply. Or, or the women who were registered to his room. Yeah, well, I didn't ask for that. But. Laura Kadian. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, fact, I'm not making this up. The, the only uh, the only thing that I remember about anybody talking to him was the lady in the uh, little shop there at the Mandalay right. Bay, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was another yeah. Joanne. Yeah, you're talking about Joanna Magnusok, I believe her name is. Right. But you know, that was always Hunter's thing that you know he was all into that, and I'm like, that's one statement. Can't back that up, and you can actually debunk it by the lock interrogation report. So either, you know, and so Hunter's whole thing with behind that was he was saying, well, that proves that there's someone else there because I believe her. And it's like, well, you know, there's nothing. Yeah, he was tied up pretty tight with that. Oh, yeah, he loved that. He, he, he was so into that. That was the last thing he was working on. And, you know, it's like, but you can't prove it, right? You can't prove that this girl, because you know how many, like, you know, semi-balding, tall, fucking white men, you know, older, you know, rich-looking white men are running around Vegas. Anyway. Very, very large part of the demographic in Vegas. Yes, I mean, you can go watch a live stream right now. Somebody walking up and down Vegas Boulevard, and you'll see seven paddocks walking down Vegas Boulevard. Oh, wow. So, like, you know, because I do that. I mean, you know, that's something I do once in a while. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just watch people walk up and down the street. I see you know, dead people all the time. You'll see, uh, you'll see all kinds of uh, people look a lot like them. You know, or, you know, just watch Fremont Street, dude. The other night, like last night, I was watching some guy in Fremont Street. And I'm like, dude, he's standing in front of Paddock. You know, the guy turns around, you're like, oh, no, it's not Paddock. But, yeah, it looked a lot like him. And um, so, like, you know, to me, it's like, well, I mean, unless we can, like, substantiate that Joanna story, I don't, you know, I don't know how much I believe her. But, you know, because I can't, you know, I can't, I can't do that. So the, uh, how many people shook, like, shook his hand, right? You know, we got a guy shaking his hand in the uh, VIP room, right? That's probably his casino host. We don't have a... a, a a statement from his casino host. Casino host would know pretty much everything. He would know his attitude, his actions. He would know how much he gambled, you know, uh, how much he was losing, how much he was winning, all that sort of stuff. So we don't have that. We have casino hosts. They all had gag orders, yeah. Yeah, we have casino hosts from every other hotel, but not that one. Um, You know, and and they even mention in, um, when they're talking to uh, the one from uh, uh, Caesar's Palace, you know, he was saying, yeah, my friend over at the MGM is his, uh, his uh, uh, current host. And he said, you know, he was telling me a little bit about him and, and the cop said, yeah, we're going to talk to him tomorrow. So you don't have to mention that. And so it's like, you know, we don't, we don't have that. We don't <coughs> have people that he checked in with, right. Jay Wheeler, uh, C or Pia. And um, what was the other one? Um, shit. The name's like uh, getting away from me, but you know, we don't have the, uh, the people he checked in with people he got the cards from. Right. So they would have a pretty good idea of what his attitude was like at the time, whether he was angry, whether he was not angry, whatever. Um, Casino host, same thing. We don't have, uh, you know, the guy that he shook his hand, shook shook hands with in the VIP lounge, which could have been his casino host, could not have been. I don't know. Um, the lady that he uh, he hugged inside of the VIP lounge that brought him the drinks. Yep. We don't have that 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 thing. I mean, he ran into a lot of people, and all we got was the <coughs> and the bagman. That's it. You know, that's all we got. You know, they they basically gave you what you needed for the narrative. You know, and um, you know, they gave you what you needed to see for, uh, you know, this is how we got the guns up. This is how we got the guns up. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know all this other shit about these other fucking people. You just need to know how they got the guns up, and, and that that fits into our narrative. But we're not going to tell you, you know, how much money he's losing, all that sort of stuff. Which, according to the FOIAs that I've been putting out, they're saying that that's all going to go in the vault someday. Well, except for the gambling records. Gambling records are, uh, you know, the casino yep. host that was going to go in the vault. The gambling records, I got a fucking letter back from the, what, uh, the DOJ saying, why do you want this? Um, so that was kind of sketchy. But, you know, I mean... Um, realistically for all the people he interacted with all we got was the valets and the guys carried the bags that's it you know and i mean that joanna thing uh the girl in the noodle shop that thinks she saw him um stuff like that we get these you know kind of red herrings that we don't know if they're true or not or how much truth there is to them but there's got to be more there's got to be more you know and, and that that does bother me it's like you know anything relating to paddock seems to be hidden Right. They're willing to throw body cams at you, you know, and all that sort of bullshit. They're willing to to talk to you about how the guns got up there and all that sort of stuff. They're willing to show all this crap, but they're not willing to show you anything that has to do with Pat and that. Bothers exactly. me. Yeah, me too. And that's, you know, what I was saying earlier is, you know, his history, his past, his, you know, more evidence of that. You know, who was this guy? Yeah, I mean, we, we have, you know, the only background check we have is something that was gotten by somebody else. It wasn't given to us by the, uh, you know, by the powers that be. But um, right that's to me that's a problem you know and that's that's why you know all these foia crap that i'm doing is it's all been paddock you know paddock i don't care about anything else you know I, me i'm not a ballistic guy i really don't care um 
to me is just padding. I want to know what this guy was, what he's about, how he's making his money, you know, who he was texting while he was up there. Um, all of that. I want to know, you know, I even want to know like what his personality was like, what his attitude was like when he was talking to these people behind these desks. Like, was he an asshole? Like everyone's saying he is, or was he, you know, joking and laughing with them? You know, I mean, at some point we see him, um, uh, where did we see him? I, I forget what, what video it was, but it looks like he's laughing in one of the videos. So it's like, okay, so he was kind of jovial at that point. But, you know, was he really like that? Was that his demeanor and his attitude while he was there? That would be something I'd be interested in knowing about, all of what you just said. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd like to know why he was cruising around with Tannerite in his van. Yeah. yeah. That well, never that really made sense to me. The FBI is probably going to fucking find that out. They're not going to have an answer for that. Right. You know, I mean, you can't for you, you know, why was the tanner right in the van? But like, yeah, I mean, you know, I, what Angelica was saying earlier, that was actually my um, original. That's what I always kind of bought into was uh, the gun deal thing. Right. You know, the gun deal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I always, you know, I can put it together, but I can't make it work with why he did what he did, you mm -hmm. know. And so, like, you know, the guy went nuts and started shooting people. He was selling guns. And then all of a sudden you decide, fuck it, I'm going to use them instead. That's weird. But, you know, there's the, to go to Vegas. You know, and I hear all these people saying stuff like, um, you know, the, the 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 average debunking on that is to say, well, he wouldn't sell his own guns. I'd be stupid. You don't, you're not going to sell your own guns in your own name. And you're not going to sell 24 of them when you're gambling hundreds of thousands of dollars. That ain't going to make you a hundred thousand bucks. So that's stupid. And, you know, but the problem with even debunking that in that fashion is like, yeah, of course he's not going to sell his own guns. Of course he's not. I mean, why do you think he has all these 24 guns and they're all different? So if he was selling these things, these are the models. These are the prototypes. They're not the final product that you're getting. The showroom for people to come look exactly. at and put in yeah, order. Sure. So, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the original uh, conspiracy that I kind of had going on throughout all this. And, you know, it's the only way I can make it make sense. Right. You know, and, and if I was psychotic and decide to do something stupid like this, at least selling guns, not, not the final act, but you know, uh, you sit there and you got all these guns in the room, right? You got them in uh, 134 and you're carting these things in with the, uh, you know, the cart on the, um, um, you know, on your, uh, the food carts, right? You kept the food cart for that reason, right? You throw the guns on the food cart, you throw them in the other room and you say, which one do you want to try out? You know, and then you carry the gun down into the van. You got all the Tannerite in there. You got clips in there too. And you, 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 you cart them down there. You leave the key card for the guy or you slip it to him in the casino, whatever it happens to be. And you say, uh, or not the key card, but the, uh, your car keys say, take the van out in, you know, in an hour and a half, I'm reporting it stolen, you know, so you better be back. And, um, first goes out, shoots up what he's, what, what you got in there, all the Tannerite, all the, you know, whatever, you know, and then, uh, comes back and tells you what the order's going to be, you know, and you somehow, you know, I, I don't know how the gun industry works as far as all this stuff goes. So I don't know who you're going to sit there and have you build like a thousand of these guns, but you know, um, that was always, you know, my, you know, that's always something that made sense to me and it's all speculation because can't prove any of this shit, but, you know, it's something that kind of made sense in my head as far as, you know, what he was doing, why he had, well, certain things, why he had the cards, why he had, you know, all that bullshit. I got a little thing to add to that speculation. Well, my yeah. point with that, because I was like kind of on the same page as you. Yeah. Is that if he was setting these up as a showroom for people to come in a place. Why, first, Angela, you changed. Why the heck would he have had all the magazines stacked with ammo? Because if I was an illegal drug, drug or gun buyer that was going to look at these guns, I most certainly, if all that ammo was there, would have popped the dude and sold all the guns. Because people well, like, that are buying illegal guns aren't that straight and narrow, you know, upstanding citizens to begin with. And he had all the ammo in the same room. Yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't have the ammo in 134. See, that's that's the problem is 134 is a portal to the outside world where 135 is. So your, you're thinking he was right. letting him in 134, but not 135. Okay, so yeah, see here, here I'll tell you, you know, and this is stupid, you know, this is just my speculation. Well, yeah, I know this is just speculation. My, 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 you know, trying to make this work, right? Make that ideology work. And so, um, you know, you sit there, you, 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 you get a buyer. You, you say, what do you want to see? What do you, what are you looking for? You look for AR tens with, uh, you know, high powered scope. I got a couple of those, and um, you go and you wheel those into one thirty four. No ammo, just you just wheel the things into one thirty four, and then you uh, you go downstairs, hand the guy a key card. Yeah, go check one thirty four. Let me know what you want. You get the baby camera in there, all that sort of stuff. You got people cam so you can tell when they're there, when they're gone. That way they don't jump you when you when you come back into the room and steal all your shit. Um, you know, they find out what they want, and you say, all right, give me a half hour. You go up there, you grab the grab them break them down, put them in a bag, take them down into the car, put them together. And then you go and hand, slip the guy the keys in the uh, casino somewhere and say, yeah, you better be back in an hour and a half. Otherwise I'm going to report this stolen. You know, I still and wouldn't trust the guys even to go into a room to look at the guns that didn't have ammo. Because like I said, 
people buying guns like this. Yeah, but you're not in there, that. right? You're not in there. You're not in the room. But they you, can you still have nothing steal to do your that. shit, and it's not insured unless you have special insurance on it. Well, they can they can steal it, but who cares, man? It's a it's a you know it's not a big deal. You know if they but steal. But they were things he purchased with money. They were all purchased legally, which yeah. meant he laid out cash for him. So if somebody came in and stole his stuff. Mr. Tightwad, you know how he was. You hear all the stories about how cheap he was. I don't think he'd set his stuff up for a theft. Yeah, but I mean, if you're gonna, if you're, if you're in the, uh, an industry where you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars off those things, you know, those those two guns that you put in that room are a fraction of that. They're not gonna but matter. But he it's, he it's had like records. This is what I find is weird. He had records for all of those guns that he purchased. But if he was doing a sales thing, like you said, he would have had to have had other guns that he got in other ways that weren't all legally purchased by him and on record well not necessarily because he's traveling legit right so he's traveling with guns that he owns like these are his guns so you know if uh if he gets pulled over you know with 24 guns in the back of his car or something like that they're all his they're all legal so you're thinking they're not going to actually purchase the prototype that is no. his they're no, just going to no. say this is the one i want he'll get yeah. it for him okay yeah. gotcha and, and you're going to get a hundred of them Right. Something of that nature. You know, That's I don't but see where where that all breaks down, you know, and, and that was kind of something I was going with for a very long time. But where all that breaks down, it's like bump stocks. Right. Who wants bump stocks? Like, well, yeah, they're I mean, if, if you're yeah, going to sell novelty. Yeah, they're novelty. Exactly. Very so, inaccurate. Yeah. And if you're going to sell 100 fucking guns, to some people, some Colombian cartel or some crazy shit like that, if we're going to go crazy speculation, you know, why bump stocks? Nobody yeah. wants those. Nobody. If wants I was those. correct, why why in the hell do you put a bump stock on an AR-15 with a scope? I think I saw yeah. one that had yeah. a scope exactly. on it with a bump yeah. stock. I mean, how in the hell are you even going to use it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can you can single fire those too. So. Well, you yeah. can, but it defeats the purpose of having a bump stock. Though, on it. Some of those scopes, I thought though, maybe weren't necessarily used for the shooting with the the weapons. But it's like when you go looking through a scope, like you'll see on TV, snipers. It's almost like a good telescope for you. So a lot of the scopes up there may have just been used so he could like see better, and then he'd put that one down and get the other gun without the scope, but then had the bump stock and then start shooting people because he kind of had to know like, okay, where's the front of this stage and like get a close up look. So I kind of think that those maybe were used for vision. He had a lot of these EOTech optics on him, so I mean I could see that. You know, he played Call of Duty a little bit probably. Um, <laughs> probably a little bit of that stuff. You know, no no scope on this one. Uh, this is an AR-10, so we can't we gotta discount that one, and it wasn't fired. I want to know what's in that backpack, by the way. I know there's something in that backpack because the guns aren't sitting on it flush. Um, right. Here we go. We got no scope on this thing. Uh, we got nothing on this one. Uh, this thing we got. Uh, it says no sights. Yeah, I guess not. It almost looks like there is though. Uh, the revolver. Yeah, no big deal. Um, this one says EOTech optics, so of course it's not scope. Um, AR-10, that's got a scope, but we can we can discount that. Uh, AR-10, we can discount that one as well. Uh, AR-15, okay, so EOTech optic, again, red dot sight, doesn't matter. Um, EOTech optic on this one, too. Um, uh, do any of those show a bump stock? Are there a bump stock being visible in any of those that are being shown right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's what you got here is, is, is bump stocks on these. Oh, that thing back here by your shoulder. So you're yeah, saying yeah, that's bump stock. Yeah. Okay, that just looked like a typical shoulder. I mean, they all say to bump stock with bump stop with bump stock. Um, no sight. Uh, EOTech optics. He seems to like these EOTech optics. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see the bump stock, like, especially on this one, this Daniel Defense right here. You can actually see that it's a bump stock because you can see the triggers covered by the stock. So that's um, that's part of the operation of the bump stock. Um, you know, uh, here we got an AR-10. So we get this bumps back and forth in your fingers, so it's very inaccurate, right? Well, it's a spring-loaded stock, basically, and yeah. and what happens is it, it uses the recoil of the rifle to, right. to force your finger to pull the trigger. So it, it you you kind of set your finger there and you pull forward on the front of the gun. You really you, you really don't pull the trigger as much as you just put your finger in front of the trigger and pull forward on the handguard of the gun and pull your pull the trigger into your finger. Is is how they work. We don't have, yeah, we don't have any scopes on any of the bump stocks. My on bad. The Air 15s. We have the EOTech optics on them. That's it. Was that's that one with the scope? What's that on top of that one? That, that's an AR-10 right here. So is that a scope though? On top. An AR-10. Well, yeah, the AR-10s have the scopes. The AR-10s do. Um, the Air 10s No, no, there are no bump stocks in the AR-10s. Um, the AR-10s were not used except for a couple of them down in the bedroom of 134, I believe. Yeah, they were supposedly the the rifles that were used to shoot at the uh, tanks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were three hundred eight. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I believe they were three hundred eight. Uh, let's see. Let me get down to them. Oh, get down to them. I mean, see, that's got a scope on it. That's an AR. Yeah, and that gun's really far away. You know, I mean, all of these—they're spread out all over the room. Oh yeah, he had them. He had them. 
yeah, yeah. I mean, you're really going to uh, let's see, run all over the place and throw guns down? Or are you going to throw them right down by the window and pick up the Well, gun? yeah, I mean, I think that's what the bathtub thing was for. All right, so here we go, the AR-15. Uh, no science on that one. That's the one that uh, was, was fired out the window. Uh, 308 bolt action. Um, I don't think he ever fired that one. Uh, AR-10s, yeah, 308, 762. Uh, bipod, red dot sight, no magazine. Uh, bipod and a scope. So, guessing the Ruger here was one of the ones shot. Let's see, 24. I don't know which one 24 is. Like, I don't know the difference between any of these guns, to be honest with you. But uh, I'm guessing that 24 was was the one being fired at the tanks because that's got a pretty beefy sight on it. Well, there's uh, another sheet. I'm not sure which report it's in, but it actually like shows yeah. the gun and tells you which one was fired and how many rounds it fired. Yeah, I don't have that. that, that I don't have it at my fingertips either. This one's like the inventory, but I know there was another one. Chris Thompson would probably know where it is because he did a lot of videos on it that shows, uh, oh, it's not Ammo Land. Yeah, I've got that bookmarked. And see, what's um, interesting yeah. is, um, to me, what was always interesting is, like, you can see that the, the, the oh, the, the brakes, the muzzle brakes are all different on these. They're, like, all completely fucking different. This one here uh, on the bottom of this pile here uh, almost looks like um, something I was looking up one time that was a competition flash hider. Um, and see, that's, that's the other problem is that we don't have an inventory of what the, uh, uh, the muzzle brakes on any of these were. Uh, to be able to say whether, you know, you would have seen a large flash or not, you know, coming out of that window. Because all the all the brakes in these are all different. They're all completely different. You know, so it's, uh, that's a tough thing, you know, to deal with. Nobody's, you know, nobody, you know, I don't think anybody's going to be able through these pictures really to even do that. But, you know, this is, uh, these AR-15s all have different uh, muzzle brakes on them. So that's that's another problem, you know, when, when you talk about, you know, seeing muzzle flashes, stuff like that. For one thing, you know, this guy was not standing on glass. I, I just I don't think this guy was ever standing on glass. So, you know, even the uh, the cops says he was standing Neither about five feet back. The, cops went in the, room. the what? The cops that went in the room weren't crunching on glass either. Oh, we're no, they weren't standing right on by glass. The window. No, no. And um, you can tell, by the way, I mean, for that whole. And I like, would think the, they would have been crunching glass and being careful not to step on round little shell casings and fall out the window. Yeah. And I always yeah. thought that body cam was really odd. Because I'm well, like, he, he showed he us the pictures and then he's standing by the window. Yeah, but bullet casings are round. It's almost like if a kid drops a bag of marbles and you're walking across the floor, you're going to be careful not to slip. And it didn't seem like they were having any balancing problems walking back to that well, area. No. I mean, he's, he's just stepping on some rounds. I mean, I, it's not like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. But um, I mean, a thousand shell casings. Let's let's. They're let's, round let's, and they roll. They would make you be unbalanced on your feet. Not. I, 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 Do you see what Chris is typing in the chat? Yeah. Uh, also, you know, the way that the rounds eject, they're not just going to eject into a nice little neat pile. They're probably going to be shooting all over the room. So oh, yeah, but we, right. We but they have, showed us photographs of where they all were. Yeah, we do have photographs. And they were of that near a lot area. of them were near right where that glass. And here's was. here's the photograph of the area right here. So you know. Um, you know, where that cop was standing uh, would have been right up against that chair. So, yeah, he would have been on, on standing on a bunch of these little shelves right here. And yeah, I think he's maybe like, even a little glass. How many right stories up and there's a big broken window with some wind coming through? It just didn't seem to me like they were even, you know, trying to be careful to balance and not step on anything to fall. I don't know, man. He was leaning forward pretty odd. hard. He was well, leaning forward. Yeah, that and there's no glass on his shoes. He looked, he looked a little nervous looking through that, that window because he wasn't right up, you know, nuts up against the window. He was. Yeah, I would be happy sitting, standing out, looking out that broken window either. Oh, hell no. Hell no, because yeah. it's windy up there. Well, you can see well, the you, blowing. But you look at it like. On his shoes either. You look at it like this, like that window, like how much do you think that's broken out? How, how high do you think that is? The window being broken, is broken out of there. I don't know. There's no glass on his shoes, so I have a problem with that too. <laughs> yes, the bottom of his slippers. You think, yeah. he's, you think he was standing in the glass? A couple of little sparkles or some shit, you know. He was, he was standing in the glass. glass. I mean, I don't think he was standing. This Probably guy was not. not nuts to the window, dude. There's just no way. Yeah, no, he was back inside. I mean, anybody who knows anything about that knows that he didn't have the muzzles sticking out the window. He was no. back inside the room. Yeah. He, he might have been using the chair as some type of rest or something along those lines. He, you know, I, I wasn't talking about him falling. When I was talking about all that a few minutes ago, I was talking about the body cam of the police. No, no, we were just talking about the glass. Yeah, I knew Paddock's was glass saying about it. Yeah. Hey, y'all, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for letting me come up. I got to play a gig tomorrow down in uh, Canton, so I got about an hour drive, and then I got to go play for four hours. So yeah, thank you very much for this point. So yeah, it, thanks yeah. for coming, Nick. 
thank you for the invite. I, I appreciate the opportunity to get on here and talk with y'all. I mean, I've been watching, I've been watching all of your videos for years. I mean, I knew about y'all long before you even knew I existed. So, um, I was, I was in all your chats. You just, I was a worker for years. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 it probably took me, I don't know, three years before I even started talking in anybody's chats, but I was subbed to every one of your channels. Um, and I watched every video that came out and I appreciate the opportunity to come up here and chat with y'all. It was, it was, I love love talking to people about this stuff. Thanks for coming on. That was great. Well, yeah, I mean, we're not all going to agree on stuff, but, you know, and that's why I watch everybody's videos. Around. Yeah, I mean, that's why I watch everybody's around. videos. <laughs> you can cross stuff off the list, keep stuff on the table. I just like the discussion, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's, I like I think this, this type of discussion was missing, you know, two or three years ago. You know, people because were too busy with the drama. Their fact. Everyone yeah. Had, yeah, and if, well, if even we never... before the drama, everyone had their own fact of what happened and they've shoved it down people's throats. Yeah. So there weren't as many of these kind of let's bounce it off the wall together, you know, yeah. things back then. And then it just turned into just a damn drama. Yeah, yeah. I think if everybody kind of just like mellowed out on all that stuff and we all kind of could get together and talk about this thing. I mean, you know, at least we could probably Without the name calling. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Like, I mean, and I think things would be would have gone a lot smoother. It would have well, been a nice. Environment. It's like tonight when you're bouncing the ideas back and forth and it's like, well, you know, that cop was leaning pretty far out the window. And it's like, yeah, I guess he was. It's like you're helping recall each other's memories and stuff. Yeah. And it, it actually is helpful because there's always some ideas we've had in our head that it's like, oh, I can cross that off now because that makes sense mm-hmm. because I'm on here with people I trust, not yeah. people that are shoving something down our throat, right. which happened exactly. for a long time right. with a lot of the channels. Yes, and, it did. And oh, when that well, was going mind, on, dude. you couldn't I, even I, question anything without them that. attacking. <laughs> but I mean, like, like even like this, like this picture right here, man, I remember uh, me and uh, back in the day, JP, me and JP went over this thing. Like crazy. We were trying to figure out how was this guy standing? How was he? Was he on one knee? Was he was he laying down? How was this guy doing this? And we're like, well, he wasn't laying down because this guy ain't laying down a glass, dude. And he ain't gonna stand no. in glass. He ain't gonna put a knee down a glass. So where was he? He had to have been have a couple feet back. Either. Huh? He didn't have eye protection either, so he definitely would have been on the ground chance nah. those things and up at in order to be laying down, he would have to be elevated to have a downward angle or a downward trajectory yeah. to be able to look down into the venue. He a- absolutely had to be standing up. Yeah. Now, in yeah. 134, he could have probably been laying flat on laying the, on the bed. beds. Yeah. But there's like no standing beds up. right here by this window. Yeah, I mean, and standing up, like, I'm thinking this guy could have been, you know, a good five feet back. Yeah, at least. Well, you know, you know everyone always like... talks about how old he is or... and how he could have done it and stuff. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but in 2011, there's an, there, I've got this off the FBI vault. In 2011 at the Aria Hotel, it was in November of, yeah, 2011, paramedics were called to Paddock's room because he had went into some kind of exhaustion thing where they had to give him a bunch of oxygen and do IEDs and send him in an ambulance to the hospital. Well, yeah. I mean, this is that link I told you that I just got right before the thing started. Oh. I was oh, no, okay, it, okay. And I found three photographs of Paddock with, uh, you know, this mask on his face and all this. And I'm, I hadn't read the date yet. And I'm like, wait a minute. These are pictures we haven't seen yet. They didn't go in his room and give him, you know, oxygen. And then when I read oh, it was no. from 2011. So, uh, you know, oh. and just more and more little things are showing up in the phone. Huh. This is a 399 page document I've got to read. So That's it's crazy. going to take a while, but that was just something as I was scrolling that jumped out at me because there was photographs. Yeah, well, let me know when you, uh, when you run that bed. through. Well, Anyways, y'all, have, too, have too, a great too. evening. All right. I right. will talk to you later. Man. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for coming around. <laughs> take care. Take care. Thanks for coming around, man. Yeah, I knew he'd want to come because we were just talking about this the other night because I was sending him your links. And uh, when you were live, I'm like, you know, he goes live late and he's been watching anyway. And then now he's sending them to me. He's like, you got to watch this one. <laughs> Yeah. So we were just having a Vegas conversation the other night uh, about, you know, a few things that I said today and, and a few other things that, that we talked about. And, you know, we did talk about the shooting from the room because I'm like, I don't I don't see how that's possible at all. And yeah. he gave me a few possibilities because he thinks it's totally possible. Oh, you'd be surprised, man. I mean, like I said, you stand on the roof of that thing and you're like, dude, this is totally possible. It's like this picture here does not do it any justice. I mean, this looks like the damn thing's like far away. You know, this is yeah, it does. Right here. Yeah. And yeah. um, no, no, <laughs> when you stand there, you're like, oh, I can't God. wait to go and see like, that. You know, I could probably, I mean, when you look, because we're also looking for cameras uh, from like the, um, you know, the, the top of the building and stuff like yeah. that, you know, that are zoomed way out and stuff like that. So, you know, when you go stand up there, I mean, I remember just, and I think I have a picture or something. Of like it, the so. perception too is probably totally off from like camera to physical being. Yeah. And you're, you're kind of like, shit, I can almost pick a person out in this crowd from here. It's, right. it's insane. It's uh, it, it gives you a whole, yeah, different perspective of like, 
you know, yes. what it looked like from his room. It's mm-hmm. just nuts. You know, and so like I was always kind of saying the same thing. It's like, dude, this guy hit a lot of people for being way the fuck out there. And look at how small that looks right there. And yeah, no, nah, hell no, dude. You need when I mean, and like I said, we're you're like nine floors up and you're looking down, and you're like, dude, like right this there. is totally like that that concert venue is right in front of your face. And it's like this is crazy. And you know, the interesting thing about that that documentary was like, you know, and um I know uh, some other people have always said this, but you think he was shooting at Jason Aldean, like he shot mm-hmm. the guitar that the bass player was holding. Like was he we, shooting? We, at? we would have to find some information that ties Jason L. Dean to Paddock. Well, I mean, yeah, but like you know what I mean? We'd have to find okay, well, no, so, not even that, dude. Not even that, just like straight up, like this dude wanted to send a message. You know, instead right. of all these people in the crowd, he was gonna take out the performer, you know, the head. Right. The, I mean, that's right. but you know, the fact that he hit the hit the guitar, that's crazy to me. That was like totally new information. It's like I didn't, you know, I know they said like the lighting guy got, you know, the board got hit or maybe he got hit or something like that. But I was like, damn, dude, did he fucking, was he aiming at Jason Aldean? That's crazy. You know, that would be, uh, if he would have hit him, that would have been a whole different ball game. This whole thing would be just all over the place. This would be nuts. You know, I have never listened to Jason Aldean. I forgot to tell you that was part of something I was going to say earlier. During that period of time, I had Jason Aldean's CD in my car because my cousin Sarah, myself, and my daughter, Cheyenne, went to see Jason Aldean and Kenny Chesney maybe or something like that. Yeah. So I was like playing the CD just over and over and over again, you know, and since the shooting, yeah, you can't I listen will not to listen to that guy. I will never go see him again. Uh, yeah. I cannot do his voice. Cannot. Yeah. Yeah. And well, he was one of my favorite, you know, country artists that I really liked. Well, it's hard to listen to any old barstool and not hear the shots. You yeah. Know, yeah or, I can't or be waiting that. for the shots. During yeah. The, you know, you're like, there's something yeah. missing here in this song. You're not enjoying the music anymore at all. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's you're just, just yeah. Huh. The screen now, we never did get to see 134, right? No. Well, we didn't see the inside of it. And what's no, your speculation? Uh, on 134? Why we well, we haven't seen 134. I mean, we got pictures in the um, in the report, but it's like they're not very good. Not on body I mean, cam. You know, a lot of this when, when, you know, he was talking earlier about, uh, you know, why haven't we, you know, why are they, why are they hiding the FOIAs? Why haven't they done this? Why haven't they done that? And I think the only answer is fuck you. That's why it's none of your business, you know? And I think that's their, their personality. But I think that's the their Freedom of Information right. Act was enacted. It is a law to keep your government in check. So they can't mm-hmm. just say, screw you. It's like, by well, law, they, they, have they could to... say you'll get it someday, you know? Yeah. Right. And, right. And, and they could wait until you pass away and then say, oh, yeah, well, we would have gotten it to you. But, you know, so then why so don't right. people, people meaning I don't know who, but us, that. other people, who knows? Why don't we contact the court and say, listen, they haven't given us all the info. Well, someone's got to do that. There are a couple you know. people that have been consulting with attorneys. Yeah, there's been people trying, you know, really hard. There are. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, that, but you unless know. you got big bucks to hire big time attorneys, you know, it's like people are trying to talk to attorneys they know, and can you find out some information about this or that? But if there's a bunch there's of no people like really emailing fun. the judge or the courthouse, wouldn't they have to do something? No, because like a petition. Well, petition? everything. Yeah, it's it's because I'm just throwing ideas out here to get the information yeah. that they're supposed to give us. Because you're not just asking LVMPD for it. It's like if you ask them for stuff, they promised to give us, they'd give it. They didn't give it all, but their whole city. Well, like, you know, goes on tourism, so that's a little understandable. But, but what about FBI petition? ATF, Think about what it took just for to get what we got. You know, the the all these news companies had to sue them for this, and we still don't have everything. You yeah. know, and <laughs> so imagine like you trying to do it yourself. Year. That's crazy. That's but I mean, yeah, getting the federal government that's different than just trying to get you know LVMPD. The federal yeah. government is going to have so many high paying people. That it's like really complicated to try to like back them into a corner and to yeah, get the attention to... of like you know the United States Attorney General or someone to stick on the case. It's like yeah, they I mean, are you really going to sue the Department of Justice? Inbox. Yeah, that you know, was I mean, weird that you got you're going after the Department, the Department of Justice, Justice for Christ's sake. I mean that's the the, the, the FBI's they're not just going to let that go, right? So you know suing them, that's good luck, man. You're going to yeah, you're going to have to go far on that one. It's just uh, you know. I, I, that's it's a pain in the ass, dude. So you can write your congressman and stuff like that, and I think some people have been doing that. You Why know, not the judge though? He's the one that did the order. The court did the order, right? Saying yeah. you, go, you have to release this, so it would then. Are you talking about the LVMPD stuff or the Freedom of Information stuff? Because they're two. No, I'm things. talking about like in the beginning they said you know you have to release all the information, right? Yeah, right. Awesome. So we yeah. compiled a list. There was a whole group okay. of people that contributed to this. And right. Letters. I typed out and sent letters to every. Uh, news media outlets that was part of that case, every attorney for each of those news media outlets, and the judge, 
and nothing happened. I actually got. Is letters there like two people the doing this said, or hundreds? Right now? Is there only Ooh, two I'm people hundreds. doing this or? No, I was the one that sent the letters, but other people have done other things. I mean, there's been okay. like a lot of people behind the scenes, like working to try to get the additional information we don't have. Right. And it's just not coming. The letters that I sent to the judges actually came back to me. They were opened with a letter in it that said, I don't remember what it said, God, it's been so long, but basically it was a blow off. And it was like, none of the attorneys from now, you got to figure you've got a whole group of media outlets that are suing them. That's the court case. So I'm notifying them of the exact numbers because other people had compiled these. It was kind of like a group effort. And I'd gotten the compiled list of what we were missing and what we were supposed to get and sent it to all the lawyers that supposedly are on the side that asked for it. And it's like, never heard a word back from any of them. So it's kind of like, why are you in the middle of this lawsuit if you don't really want the stuff? Okay. You know? LVSA is like, it's more, he's, he's probably replying to what I'm saying. Um, it's more complicated than that. Eddie did the same thing. Judges don't care. Media outlets don't care. Weg and I also made a website documenting what was missing. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. LVSA helped me a lot with this, the actual putting the letter together with the documentation yeah. of what we were supposed to get and what we didn't get. And, yeah. you know, it's like the letters that got sent were extremely accurate. And I'm sure Eddie's letters were accurate, too. Yeah. Yeah. So we weren't like just making up random stuff and they were real professional, you know, and they they just don't care. The news Did Edward ever anymore. ask for any FOIAs? Do you know? True the Seeker? What? Back then, do you know if Edward ever asked, did any FOIA stuff? I don't know if Edward personally did it, but we had a lot of groups on Facebook where people got together and discussed oh, stuff, okay. and then okay. one person in the group would, would take care of it. Because if you had, like, too many duplicates going in, it's like Pointed Stick did a bunch himself. Okay, Michelle yeah. on a bunch. Um, Xander Arena, I don't know if you know him. He did a bunch for one of our oh. groups, so it's like, I know okay. LBSA has yeah, I think a bunch LBSA's out. got the, uh, yeah, he's got the trophy for that. Yeah. yeah, he's so he just he's been learn. on trying to get the documents from FOIA is probably more than any of us. Yeah, see, and I don't know he's all learned that, how to tip talk you know. through some of this red tape, and it's like it's not getting anywhere. Yeah. They just uh, they've given up caring. The town lives off, um, you know, entertainment and vacationers, right? Right, and that kind of stuff, and they don't want any of this, they want it to just go away. Tonight, Michelle, who was in our chat earlier, went down. I was watching her, she went down on uh by Mandalay Bay and Route 91, just right around before, you know, the 1005 thing when people- Oh, there's a website, he just put it up there. And all that. He said there was only about seven or 10 people there because they had a concert they funneled the people to and told them to do the human chain down there. And she said she thinks it's because it's an election year. So really it's like the town wants this, other than their private little small ceremonies, they kind of want this to go away. Yeah. I mean, they, they have a history of that, though. I think I was watching something not too long ago where they were talking about uh, things that happen in Vegas that, uh, yeah, just kind of get brushed under the rug. You know, things that you never hear about that, that happen out there. Suicides, murders, well, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, they want people. My brother lived in Vegas for a while, and he talked about, you know, I mean, there's a big homeless problem. There's a crime problem. Oh, yeah. I mean, they don't They don't talk about this stuff. The people that live there see it and know it, but they want everybody to spend their dollars. Their whole town would go down <laughs> if tourism stopped. I mean, they need that because it's not just the tourism places like, say, the Mandalay Bay that's collecting the money. It's like the rental car companies and the gas stations, they're selling people gas in the 7-Elevens where people are running in to grab a sandwich. It's like the entire town, as it balloons out, it's like so many people that live there, their jobs would disappear if tourism disappeared. You know, I mean, I'm sure yeah. the jobs out there aren't tied to it. But in one way or another, it's kind of like everything that keeps that town thriving branches off of the tourism exactly you know just like here in florida and orlando you know and i you know being involved with it so much i've seen how unsafe it really is you know and vegas is worse you know and i do alternative stuff i don't typically do a whole lot of strip stuff um <clears throat> so i hang out more in the art district which is the old school part of vegas <coughs> you know and so it's got a lot of historical buildings your older casinos are down you know it's more the north end of the strip and it's right across from uh where the memorial is you know, that's way off, you know, the strip. So it's the arts district. You guys should check it out. Things are way more affordable. You can go to some pretty hip and cool places, you know, that have music, live music, and, you know, even dancing, if you like that, you know, and the drinks are way cheaper, but you will see a ton of homeless 
and some sketchy shit going down. So LDSA you know, I just put in here, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I kind of thought this was important since it was anniversary night. He just went down there like around shooting time mm -hmm. and he said there was nobody there. There was a group of about 15 people at gate five and then he stood at gate one from 10.05 to 10.16 with about three other people. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so they really funneled them. Michelle had said they were funneling them to some other concert and mm -hmm. she thought because it was an election year or whatever, but it's like Either that or people just since it's been five years now aren't gathering down there. But it's like That's those bad. numbers are shocking me because I remember every year we'd watch live streams of all the people down there just packed like crazy. So, yeah, he right. just said what he saw when he went down there. He wrote it in chat. So am I on the right website? Because it starts out with uh, since 1993. Who are you talking to? LDSA? Any yeah. It says evidence status, and then it starts out by since 1993. LVSA's link didn't come through as a blue clickable link, so maybe I know I had to fix my own to relink it somehow. Maybe that's not the complete thing because it goes on like the shooting archive thing, but then it goes into subcategories. I know, but it put is a link to that in there again. LVSA, that goes you'll have to fix documents. it. I fixed it, and it works. I just um, had the website it. hasn't been updated in a couple years, but it says from 1993. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, it says. Okay. Yeah, that's that's just the wrong date. <laughs> okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. I so got once it. Once you get to that website, you start hunting around and doing some Here. search. He's got him and Weg have everything on there. I mean, everything True seeker. You, you just got to hunt for it. I'll put this in the private chat because I fixed the link and and I got on the website. So there's the link that he put in the chat. Oh, yeah. You can do it in uh, private, but you can't do it in regular chat. It's weird. Well, because he had to separate. Because if he's not a mod, he is if a you're mod, not though. a mod, you can't post links. He is a but mod. he is a mod. Oh, he is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Here, let me put it in again and see. It's got to This time it showed up as a link. And it's exactly, you have to give him permission, too. It's exactly what oh, he you? put in, though. Exactly. Yep. And this is I was going to share something, and I was going to share my screen, but it said pointed stick had to give me permission oh, oh. To share oh my screen. well sharing yeah. screen is different than what yeah. i'm talking about yeah anyone with a wrench can put a link in here but i don't know why lbsas didn't turn into a link it's the Let's exact see. same one okay so true seeker put it in there yeah yeah i got that out of your yeah perfect thank you over there thank you oh he's on his phone that might be it he said yeah but at least we got it like if you separate the things it'll it'll let you do it like that yeah that's a link everybody even people that watch this later that aren't watching now that's a link everyone needs to have bookmarked in your computer because literally you can go there and find everything yeah I mean, it's it's a, he's got a definitely hunting job because now five years have gone by but um they have well you know how his youtube is with like everything on, that he could find on video and this just has you know wow this is cool reports. It's, it's totally cool i could get lost on there for hours i have many times yeah. and who yeah. all worked on this um lvsa and weg i believe wow weg's kind of disappeared in the last couple of years so i think a lot of it lvsa has continued on but um he said it hasn't been updated in some years though so maybe when weg left they stopped updating it yeah, him and Wag did it. So but this then, has so been up for a long, long time. Like a lot so, of us already have a bookmark and know to go there to search for stuff. Okay, but, so uh, some of this then, as much as possible. So some of this true seeker could have come in by now and it's just not updated. That would be a question for LVSA. I think anything oh, okay. that's come in, he's made a video about or passed along to someone else to make a video about. I don't think you're gonna find any secrets in here that you didn't know unless it was something from the past that you just missed? No, that's not what I mean. So, like, say he gets in FOIAs or he gets in this missing information currently, say, within the last year or whatever. It, oh, will, he would, would, share. It be, would it be updated in this website, LBSA? If he hasn't worked on it in a couple of years, it probably wouldn't be updated in this, but he would update us in a video if he got something important in. Oh, okay. Plus, okay. a lot of us still talk on the phone and in emails and stuff. So it's like pointed stick would definitely know in a heartbeat. If yeah. LBSA okay. Got a okay. Really good boy that came Just in, to make sure that like, I don't know that. I, I think he keeps secrets from me too, but that's fine. He keeps secrets. Well, yeah, all we good. all get secrets from each other. But that's the thing. Everyone's like, oh, the Las Vegas community, you know, has kind of died. And it's like, there are so many of us that are still in communication on the phone and email and Facebook. That's really and stuff. good. It's like, it hasn't really died. The 
that's public really good. Part of it has died. That's really good. Of all the attacking, but yeah, yeah, the YouTube part of it. Kind yeah, of died. there's yeah. a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Like you know, like I was talking yeah. about the holiday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and stuff. Oh, shame. We still pass our info <laughs> around. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's true. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, yeah Stella, you're still... another one I keep in touch with all the time. So I know if you've got something new, it's like it'll be in my box. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a few of. I mean, all of us here uh, keep in touch. Uh, via messenger or a phone. Well, yeah, so. it got to the point where it's like you didn't want to get in a debate with 200 people in the chat room. Exactly. It's kind of like, here's the information, look at it. Well, and then have five videos made and about it, is it later. What it is. About you. Yeah, it's stressful. Yeah. Yeah. I get time video, for and then, like, point six <laughs> then you got 15 people. Um, um, LBSA does say in here there's a FOIA that has been received, been received that will be published soon, but it's not my find, so I can't speak much more about it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I respect that. I totally respect that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, you know, whenever it's someone else's information, it's, it's sketchy. You have to, yeah, well, I've had people before there's protocol now information and pass it on to me and have me do the video. Cause it's like, they don't want the attacks. Yeah. They don't, it's not right. the attacks. It's the debate. It's kind of like, here's what I have. Take I think it's more than a debate. Like, even it's not even a debate. They're and... not friendly debates. Yes. Well, yeah. no, the problem, the problem you have with releasing information before you're done with it is, uh, you know, uh, there's there's particular people that will actually steal that information and actually make it their own and yes, throw I a know. narrative behind yep. it. And then yep. once they throw a narrative behind it, that's the way it is from then on out. And everybody discounts it from, from you know, well, you know from that point thing. on. It's like when you share someone else's stuff, it's like you always source it or put the link where you got it or send them to so-and-so's YouTube, TikTok, whatever. Even if they didn't want to do a live stream and discuss it, it's like you somehow link it around unless they want to be anonymous and so many people just post videos with information and they don't source it out and it drives me crazy so we're talking about get that footage. <laughs> i'm just glad yeah, Alan saw fell that off. hoover was publishing a video, but we didn't watch it yet <laughs> yeah you I guys remember that alan guy exciting in the oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah, Ooh, yeah. Alan alan been gone a <laughs> he don't he doesn't like me anymore yeah he don't like he's me at all he's he's done. Like I, I don't see him anywhere he's not my friend anymore i mean i could show you uh he had some uh, we had some interesting debates on some of his videos and and he i don't know if he's even made a video ever since because uh, that last video he made man i went after him and he's uh, just done like home improvement videos yeah but i don't even know if he's done any of those lately i don't know he he hasn't. i haven't paid attention really he hasn't done his, his, alan and i and we're getting into drama along. here so be careful but, all right yeah, yeah. Alan, yeah. Alan well, and my I favorite video agree <laughs> to disagree and you know i'd bounce ideas off him and he'd talk sense into my head sometimes you know so it's like we always kind of had an okay relationship but then after all that drama started oh, yeah. he didn't really go after me too much in the drama but no, was, yeah, was he like got that. into some personal crap with me when we were on messenger you know threatening stuff well i know i don't even want to say what he said but anyways after that it's like i've just never talked to him again yeah like, my, favorite threaten was my to... home and my family with little things it's like yeah, not no. that alan would be able to do crap but it's like i just i wasn't playing that game it was like okay the video he made where he dropped his camera into his lap and he was wearing like tight oh, black yeah. panties <laughs> yes oh my i've God. got the one where he's got fox charlie on accidentally yes fox charlie? Shows, yeah shows camera yep. i but, loved fox charlie he was so funny and nice and then he got caught up in the drama yeah everyone did you know everyone did at some yeah. point and yeah. then that kind of that kind of ruined a lot of this mm -hmm. i mean i think um you know you would have had if you know because the whole idea behind this whole thing is kind of crowdsourcing i think if you would have had um you know, if the drama hadn't happened, you know, maybe it's possible, you know, uh, something could have come out of this, you know, I mean, um, yeah, you had a lot of different minds looking at this at some point, you know, everyone had a uh -huh. different direction they were going. And, um, well, and know, the drama the just went too down. far. I mean, when cops are going to people's houses and jobs are being called yeah. and, you know, yeah, yeah, you know you're stupid. pulling up in people's driveways when this and kind of stuff, wives, man, that's like, yeah, called. that's like way cancel culture before cancel culture a was a thing. Yes, like exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, that was, that was an issue, but I don't know. You know, if, uh, you know, if these guys weren't all fighting and stuff, then yeah, maybe, I mean, you know, it'd be nice if, uh, you know, we could all communicate. There's some people out there, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, don't even like me and, uh, they have a lot of information, you know, and it's, it's, it's crazy. Well, there's some there's... really good ones that have disappeared. Return to Logic and 4E, the United States had a ton of good information. Yes. And in the chats, they used to put, you know, things in the chat that if you were in a lot of chats they were in, you could collect information. Yeah, Return Logic was cool. They've just yeah. disappeared. I mean, their channels are still up. Well, 4RE never actually, I don't think, had a channel and made videos. Yeah, but she so. researched like crazy. And um, yeah. Return to Logic, I think, just got sick of the, the BS. You yeah. Know? Like, she so worked too. her butt off yeah. so mm -hmm. hard. I talked to her. Return, I, I, uh, I had her on Hangouts for a bit. Oh, nice. well, that's good. Because, yeah, she She's worked cool. her butt She's off really cool. on those victims. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the living victims. 
and people just in those chats were just they were kind of mean to everybody but yeah they're brutal she just felt like all her work was going on deaf ears you know Mm -hmm. she disappeared for re i don't know what happened to her because she was always around in the chat i didn't really know her very much yeah i didn't know her i was in a couple private chats with her and used to talk with her and i know I had told Michelle today that um, she had done a lot of the work on the pilots and stuff. And Michelle was looking into something. And I'm like, see if you can find her and get a hold of her. Because it's like she's probably got notebooks full of airline FAA pilot stuff on the Popatic situation. Yeah, I'll tell you something. So, like, uh, we were talking about, you're talking a little bit about uh, Dion there. And um, Alan. Yeah, well, uh, there was a, uh, he, he said something in one of my things, right? And this was this was kind of why he he's pissed off. It, you know, it doesn't come to my channel anymore, which is fine. I'm good with that. And, um, you know, but he said something about someone getting shot in the face at, where was it? I forget what, oh, Venetian. I think it's Venetian. I think he said uh, someone goes, you know, there was a report of someone shot in the face of the Venetian. And I'm like, I, you know, I haven't read everything. I haven't gone through everything. I'm like, I, but I've never heard that before. I'm like, that's new to me, man. So, you know, um, what I did was, um, okay. What I did was uh, I asked a person to ask the one person I thought would know just about everything. And it's crazy, but that was KL. And so I had somebody, you know, who was in communication. There was a report of the Venetian. I don't know if it was shot in the face, but there was. Yeah, I don't think it was shot in the face. That would be like all over the place. Right. So, you know, and and I, you know, and, and, and she straightened, she straightened me out. And I'm like, you know, that's what's sad about this whole thing. It's like, you know, and I know she fucking's got to absolutely hate me at this point because, and I wouldn't blame her for it. She was a really um, good researcher, but then towards the end just completely flipped. Well, and I mean, let's like, not get, let's not get crazy into the KL drama here. I'm just saying it because no, I'm, I'm actually. She could research. Her. You could ask her questions, and it's like, man, she could pull her notes. She on knew it. Page yeah. that was on she knew it. And then when she turned yeah. into um, not drama, okay. I'm just okay. saying the whole fake thing. It's like all that research of hers just went out the window. Oh, who we lose? Oh, we lost uh, uh, Angelica. But LBSA no, I mean, saying there's a guy shot in the head at the front desk of New York, New York. Is that in addition to the one Angelica was telling us about, or are they mixing them up? I don't know. Because she know. had said the aria, didn't she? But the point I was trying to prove there is that you know, you know, someone like that, you know, has a lot of information, right? Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, the communication is completely shut down, and I, I don't even know if she's still doing it. But that's besides the point. But the mm-hmm. communication got completely shut down because of all the drama and all the bullshit, you know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, uh, even though you don't maybe not agree with, the, you know, she may not agree with me. I don't agree with her. Whatever, you know, none of us agree with each other. But mm-hmm. um, that's besides the point. You know, the point is, you know, you got people out there with a lot of information. This this drama just shut that down completely. Which well, is, it was yeah. always to me with with the networking was like connecting the dots and finding puzzle pieces because everyone was researching in different things. So oh, if I knew somebody was totally digging on one thing, it's like, I wouldn't bother with it. I'd go dig on something else. And yeah. I was like that too. It was yeah. like slowly this puzzle was being built and then it just exploded on us. Yeah. I was like that too in the beginning, but then, uh, you know, I stopped trusting people mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, yeah. and well, like, well, some of them prove their self to be, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, like, you know, I never wanted to do like, let's say the autopsies. I didn't want to deal with that, dude. I mean, you want to talk about depressing shit. When you start... I did the autopsies deep dive for a year. Oh God, that's I'm horrible. You know I've I mean? I got them all printed out. When I die and I got my pretty, kids yeah. go through my stuff, they're going to be like, what kind of sick person is my mom that she's got this like 200 pages of yeah. freaking death shit on people. You know, it's like, yeah, it's fucked up. And, and, you know, I never, I never want to get into that because there was, you know, somebody who was, and I'm not saying any names here, but there was somebody who was supposedly involved in all that, you know, who was, who was dealing with that. And, yeah. you know, and he helped you know, me a lot, a lot. And, and yeah, but the problem is like, you know, when uh, you find out that that person actually lived in the same building as that, you know, the shooter, it's like, I don't well, trust you anymore, thing, dude, though. you're sketch. It that wasn't so fun. much that he was giving me information. I was asking him numbers and he was telling me what pages to find him to save me time. So I don't want to say like he was feeding me information that I was agreeing with verbatim. It was just like I would all the numbers on the autopsies and the map where the people were found and their toe tag numbers all were mixed up kind yeah. of on purpose to confuse us. So I would email him with a number, well, the, the three different numbers, and he would tell me what pages to go to to find him and what report because I was putting different things together. So, yeah, all the information I got from him, I wasn't, like, being spoon-fed information. He was actually helping me quickly find things that I was working on. Well, yeah, I mean, as long as you can, like, you know, go back and, and, and do your own, uh, you know. Uh, oh, I always cross-match everything, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's, you have to do that because, you know, <clears throat> people are just sus as fuck, man. especially that guy, man. He always just, it was like, I was a big fan of that guy at the beginning, and it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, dude, you're suspect now, dude. That's, like, crazy. I like, never thought he was too suspect for that, because I was like, well, it could have just been a coincidental, no big deal, blah, 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 blah. So I just kind of let that blow over me. 
Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> it's like, nah, dude, no. Um, you know, because to me, like, that's and he why he never I, put out any information that I didn't cross research myself. So it's like I never found anything of his that was totally out of line with things I was working on. So maybe that. No, I don't. I don't. You know, I don't think that. But I just, you know, that's why I always ask people. Like, uh, that's the one thing that's always a question in my mind. Is like, why are you here? Like, why do you care? Why are you doing this? You know, because that's um, that's an important question. I think you know, because you know, most people don't give a shit about this sort of stuff. You know. <laughs> um, you know, and like I said, um, yeah, I know you're talking about, you know, Jason Goodman and stuff like that. Why are you here? Why do you care? Why are you bothering with this, 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 this bullshit? Like, I do think that there are people that were paid to come into our community to either push stuff, confuse people, start fights. I mean, I think that there were a few and I don't know who they are, but some were more obvious than others. But I, I honestly think that because we were all getting together looking for answers, there was people that didn't want us together looking for answers as a, as a nice, polite group of, like how we're all talking tonight. We don't all agree with each other, but we're having a good discussion. And I think back then there were people that were planted in here, you know, for whatever reason. Or they just did it, like like Alan. I think Alan just enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, Alan's just a troll. I don't think anybody's pay, yeah. but nobody's payroll. He's, he's got a history of that. what he was doing, yes. Yeah, he's got a history of trolling people. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, when I talked to Ouija, Last time I talked to Ouija on the phone. Rest his um, soul. Yeah. yeah well, um, I used to be on the phone with him every day. I loved yep. Ouija. Yeah, last time I talked to him on the phone, he mentioned a person, uh, a commenter, right? Somebody, well, somebody, you know, just who, who leaves comments once in a while. And he's like, what do you think about that guy? I go, I don't I don't even know who that is. He goes, oh, he's a fed. I, I can almost prove it. Like, yeah. Ouija shit. was the king of research. He was so sick yes, he was. that he couldn't really do anything else but that. And he, when he would send me, because we were on the phone every day and he always was sending me links to stuff. He was a digger, and it's like I would believe things he said. I mean, yeah, yeah well, you know, so like in detail. As far as that stuff goes, <laughs> like, um, you know, again, I'm not really a conspiracy kind of person, but the um, in the beginning, Lombardo came out, you know, and actually said in a press conference, "We're hearing on social media that uh, you know there's collusion, you know, and all sort of bullshit, right?" So it's like they had somebody monitoring social media because it came back later on that newscast or yeah, some some news thing where he said. Um, he said, Oh yeah, I'm not on social media at all. Yes. You know, and it's like, so who was then? Like who who was who was watching, you know, the social media aspect of, of all of <laughs> Well they had, they had a payroll of people, I'm sure. I mean, come on, they hired however many hundreds of people it was, LVSA would know, to redact the stuff before they released it to them. Yeah. You know, so you know darn well they had paid some uh social media Yeah, I just don't know how, how far how how much I would go into that, whether they were just kind of watching to see what kind of um you know, what kind of uh, to report back. Is going on, you know, kind of like a psyop, you know, just, just you know, like, watch and see the reaction of the public. Which yeah, I can see them having a, having a, a, a like, oh, they pay attention for like a minute, but then a month later, they ain't got time for that. I, I talk to people to this day that I'm like, hey, you ever heard about the Las Vegas shooting? And they're like, when was yeah. that? I don't know. They don't. Well, you know, it's like how quickly people forget or put it outside of their minds, you know, if it doesn't directly affect them. They don't. They don't care. Well, yeah. I will yeah. tell you, I don't know if anybody kept track, but once that lawsuit was settled, there were four very prominent people in our community that just vanished. And oh, it's really? like, I, no, uh -huh, well, I think had... that they were here to monitor and keep an eye on whatever. And it's like, it was very coincidental, but it's like literally just vanished. Exactly. Plus, Ouija passed away, you know, pretty young and you, Hunter UK, you know, happened really quickly. Leanie died. Yep. Jake so we... Gunderson died. Yeah. Yep. We, I mean, a lot of deaths. Deaths within this the month. first one was the yeah. young 20 something year old gal that used to go to inserts all the time, Nyla. Yeah, Nyla, yes. uh, she was like 20 something years and old. Ellen, Ellen I I had health it. issues, and I think Ellen may have died. I don't know. I haven't well, heard from her, but I haven't seen her in any chats. In a oh, long yeah. Time. Who was that was truth bombs, dead. you know, like Bestie, the female with blonde? I can't remember her name, but remember her? She died pretty early on. Truth bombs? Like, that was Nene. Needy. Yeah, that's what yeah, but Needy didn't die for a few years into this. I think she only died two years ago. Why are you guys talking about people who died within the community? No, I'm just no. But anyways, did you Where guys... you go with this? This is making me nervous here. Like, <laughs> did you guys know I'm next? <laughs> did, did you guys no, did you not, you grab, not did you grab that Evernote that I put in there? Not the first one, but the second one. I saw it. I don't know what it is though. I'm, I'm it's just an Evernote my and it lists somebody put this all together and I saved it in my computer. It's a YouTube channel creator directory, literally from years ago. Oh, oh, this is Bob. This is, this is from Do you no, this, no, 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 no. This was created by Return to Logic. She created this. Oh wow. Okay, I, is I, this is this an LVSA's thing? 
No, this You're is something I had saved. Anymore? This is something I had saved to my own computer. Okay, Back so from. Do the links when? still work? Yeah, click the Evernote link. Oh, uh, I see okay. it. It's big. Okay. Yeah, created by Return to Logic. Okay. It, yeah, it was created by her a long time ago. I remember and this. Yeah. She had sent it out, and I saved. I saved so much stuff from Vegas. My computer. Oh, American Everyman, dude. Yeah, that guy. Oh well, here I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on here. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll put the, even though it's her stuff. I don't usually like using other people's stuff, but yeah. I'm well, no, put she, it in the chat just in she case gave it. watches this later wants it. She gave it to us. Oh, you she can't put the link us. in the chat because it's too many letters. We'll have to put it as a comment later. Bobby's hit the floor. Um, I think he was having family issues and personal issues, and he just kind of faded away. No. Angela might still no. keep track of him. Yeah. He comes around. He leaves me comments. I think I saw him do a live once a, while, once a long time ago. It was a long time ago. He, he uh, showed up on InServes one night out of the blue, and he has shown up on my videos. Brian Eskew pops in once in a while, too. Oh, man. America Truth comes first. I forgot about JCP. I go but to... I go to um, had a list that had I go to Brian's one. channel. Cha Brian has a channel. Oh, does yeah, he? Yeah, but oh, he okay. doesn't cover Vegas anymore. No, I know. I don't tell people no, like in, tell in the public. Him he no. so much attached. Oh, wow. and, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't well, know. But he's, he is in our Vegas chat that we talk all the time. He's and okay. JCP and Mo Ketro is in our messenger with Angelica and myself. So we're still in contact. Oh, yeah, JK, okay. we're still in contact. Truth bomb, farmers, we're all still in contact. Charles Not Wells, often. Charles. Charles. Hey, Not look at the YouTube chat. Uh, LBSA saying a whole lot in there. Okay. Oh, yeah, wow. he's talking about bodies. You guys are just yeah. Bodies. I haven't been paying attention to it either. But, but yeah. no, he, does, he doesn't well, like He was this. asking about bodies, and then he said, Askew is one of those ones I don't trust. I was pretty tight with Askew, and it's he like, never LBSA came across to me as someone here, untrustworthy. Yeah. I really, well, because we were in a private conversations with him for a long time, Truth Seeker. That's why. Yeah, we did a lot of those private chat and live. We got to know him, him a little bit better, I think. Well, yeah, and I used to talk to him on the phone and stuff, and he seemed yeah. pretty even keeled. Yeah. Diana X. Yeah. I always liked yeah. him. Diana still has her channel. Does she, got, does she have anything on there? She oh, does. Diana X here. Not, not Vegas stuff, of course. But she's she's got a YouTube other video. Man, I don't know what you're doing, Ben. I don't know why you say this, Ben. <laughs> I know I love her. It's hilarious. Um, wow, you know what I'm noticing is I'm going through <laughs> her thing. Special work. Everyone, she's got their uh, YouTube name, and next to mine, she's got my real name in parentheses. <laughs> oh, she does. <laughs> yeah, but that's because they used to, you know, still call me my real name. Everyone knows my name's Kathy. That's right. That's right. So it probably didn't matter. It's like I'm in Jack nine one one. She's JLPL. See that account right there, JLPL. Yeah. yeah. He still has like he still has a channel. But that poor guy has gotten into drug addiction, and he talks a lot about it on his channel, mm. a lot. So that's what he does now. And he, I guess he he had problems with it already, but he he talks a lot about it on his channel. Who's Jerry well, to do? Oh, Jerry used to post a lot of videos. Huh. Yes, it was a very small channel. Yes, and she was stuck on something. What was she? I'm stuck I'm on? subbed to her too. Okay. Yeah, and it's like all of her videos were about the same thing. Trying she to did baby monitor around, stuff, and, and like can't the, remember what the nanny was. stuff, right? No, she wasn't nanny. No, she did like the nanny, the baby cam. I don't know. She did some some interesting things on there. Uh, but yeah, she didn't have many subs, but she'd come in the chat. I call it, she doesn't have a, a link to John Cole. Um, there's Roger Keenis, uh, Hoover. Oh, there's Hoover. Okay, so yeah, Lady Justice is KL, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, and she still has her channel. I don't know who. Yeah, I wonder how many of these if we clicked on with the links wouldn't work because so many people lost their channels and had to start over. Yeah. Yeah. And I my original, my original channel, I got back. I got my original channel back. I just don't use it. Well, mine wouldn't work because I've I've done this channel many times. I I keep. Although she may have updated it, I don't know. Truth and you and Joe Roscoe have gone through a ton of channels, so it's like I'm sure the links for them, unless she continually updates this and we just don't know it. Yeah. <clears throat> Man, this is kind of scary how much this, uh, how much work she put into this. She really put a ton of work into it. I remember snagging everything and downloading it to my phone and in red. Why am I in red? What's red mean? Um, because I think you can't you remember you took down your first channel. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Up to down. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's her channel. Uh, Sean, Binsack, there you go. Uh, I about him earlier. 
Um, Smokey, he still has his channel. He's big now. Smokey. Oh yeah, like, yeah, I remember. Yeah, he got involved in drama for a short time there. Well, he's got he never was really too involved in it. He kind of got out of it, and he now got he out does. Of he's got like a whole new group of friends, and they do live streams, but Thumbs. not really on Vegas or for Justice for All and Howie Sprinkles, Sprinkles. Stephen McClarence. Return for Logic or Return to Logic was top notch with her research. Yeah, she, she did. Man. Well, not just this list here, but she had found almost every single injured victim. And had yeah. full reports on them. I yeah. mean, she did a lot. I mean, there's family ten. interviews, hospital interviews, uh-huh. whatever she could find, she had compiled. So yeah, that girl worked her butt off. Okay, so this was Risa. Um, yeah, she Either was girl uh, Karen. She's still did. around too, but she's really off the deep end. That chick. Who? Uh, a truth or girl Karen? She was around in the very, very yeah, beginning. Yeah, but she got kind of strange after a while. That's what I just said. She went off the deep end. Like you people, with truth in your channel. <laughs> but um, and Wapdeck, there there's again? Will. We will debunk you. <laughs> oh, she's there's even got go. the sock accounts on there. Yeah, she does. She did good. <laughs> she's really good. She's funny. I bet you she's updating this continually, and we probably just don't know. Like I said, there's I people still no because she doesn't. Teams. She doesn't have my new cha- my channel that I have now. She oh, doesn't okay. have that on there. I, I haven't talked to her in a very long time, and I don't think she's doing anything because usually uh, I end up with a hangouts notification when she starts watching videos again. Oh, okay. She, she well, really... I think she felt she did such an extraordinary amount of work, and it was wonderful work. And I think what was going on in a lot of the chats, I think she probably just felt like, "What did I do all this for nothing?" Nah, she was. She, she did great work. She had. She she, I think videos. she had some personal stuff going on there, and then I just don't think she ever came back. Oh, yeah, okay. She she had some personal stuff going on, and then she she took a break. Said she was going to take a break from Vegas for for personal reasons, and then uh, I, yeah, she just never came back. Oh, okay. And okay. and she last I talked to her, she was talking about coming back and doing some more of this stuff. But then, uh, yeah, she just never did. She but, might still be watching these things and just not commenting. She might be. She might be. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, if you notice, we've got some new names that show up a lot in these chats. Especially yeah, you like never know. Channel. I don't. So, you guys so, do. I I oh, go on yeah, my but you've got a smaller channel, but on the bigger channels, <laughs> you get these people that come in the chats and they know what they're talking about. No matter where I go, I, go I, wonder, I see what I say under my own name. Yeah, but I wonder how many, a lot of them are of the people that really were researching before, but they don't want in the drama, so they've just made a new... Yeah, reinvent their chat. Nobody would know. Chat. I should have put a yeah. video together, because um, I got a video of, uh, let's see, you know Tim Pool. I don't know how many of you watch Tim Pool. Um, I got a video of Tim Pool mentioning the Vegas shooting, how like you know we don't have enough information on that to make a determination. And uh, then uh, that guy Salty Cracker, which cracks me up. And um, they both mentioned the fucking the, the, the shooting. And you know, Salty Cracker is the same thing where he's kind of a conspiracy guy, so he likes to talk about. Conspiracy. I love Salty Cracker. The salt yeah, even love. though it's it's usually like a joke to him. Yeah. But he said something about yeah, you know, the FBI they're so good they can't find out who did the fucking Vegas shooting five years later or whatever. And he'll just he'll just say these off the wall comments. But he always brings up the Vegas shooting as a failure of the FBI, which is interesting. Interesting. And, uh, and he's got a massive channel. I mean, we're talking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I watch him every day. I, I love his content and I love how he questions things. Yeah. And he's always like allegedly, you know, and Tim Pool's even bigger. So Tim yeah. Pool has mentioned it. I've watched time. Tim Pool many times. Oh, okay. I was gonna say you'd yeah. probably like him, Angela. Oh, yeah. No, I totally do. Yeah, so yeah. I, I lean that direction, you know. I, I yeah. <laughs> well, Tim, Tim Pool's uh libertarian and uh, salty crackers uh just Trump. It doesn't matter. No, not really Trump because he's questioned some stuff on him too. I think he's just more conservative. Well, I mean, come on. He's always saying, "My dude, our dude, our dude said this, our dude said that." Orange man, red, all the way. You know, that's that's his thing. Yeah. My 11 year old granddaughter in Texas, her birthday's coming up, so I went to her Amazon wish list, and I text my daughter, and I'm like, "Have her updated." And I noticed that in 2021. She has on her wish list, and of course she probably doesn't still want it now, a Trump 2024 flag, a big, huge one. Oh, wow, I'm, that's funny. I'm just cracking up because I'm like, she put that on there last year then, she would have been 10. That's him. funny, a 10. Him. You can still find them. You can get them. I know you should. Oh, I know, but I don't know. It, being where she lives, she's in Texas, and a lot of them there are like the liberals. They have come home from school. Well, they're like the minority. I mean, most of them are like – they're all ranchers where she lives, so a lot of their parents are workers. And she's come home from school a couple times crying, because they're all they're all you know Republicans. My daughter and her family and the kids at school are like, oh well, your parents are trying to get all our parents sent back to our country and oh. stuff. So she came home um, crying. <laughs> That's a couple what I was gonna times. say. There's no liberals in Texas. What are you talking about? But yeah. So, oh, yeah, there's a Austin. lot of you do have Austin. There. You have, oh uh, yeah. You probably have some in Dallas, I'm guessing too, but. I mean, well, I have a son that lives in Austin. Austin is crazy. I'm going to get off of here. 
Okay. So I want to say goodbye to you guys. Yeah, thanks we should probably close this up yeah, anyway, man. Ended up four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. I know. Thanks a lot. This was <laughs> way cool. Yeah, this yeah. I'm glad you guys get to <laughs> join me for the anniversary because I well, yeah, I didn't know what to do tonight. I just I wanted to do something. I didn't know. Yeah. So. We didn't. Oh, I didn't yeah. either. And like even Debbie, I invited her, and you know she's like, I've been thinking about Vegas all day, and no one's doing anything. Yeah. Well, you know? I mean, at least you guys uh, were willing. You know. Come yeah. on, you, you guys got me company on this thing because I. Well, I appreciate it because I was supposed to be there tonight and yeah, completely heartbroken that I. So was I, but I, I just right. said screw it and didn't yeah, go. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me know next time you're there, and we'll tell oh, you. Oh, I mean, I could go to Vegas. You know, like I said, it's a four-hour drive or something like that. Oh, that's cool. For me to get there, but um, I'll be going on a plane. Yeah. Well, you gotta <laughs> shoot me your Facebook too, pointed stick. I don't even. I think I know your. I don't. You know don't have one, do you? Um, not as pointed stick. No, I I got banned on Twitter. Um, I think the Facebook got taken down because I did have one. Mm -hmm. I think it got taken down because like you can make a fake one or email you if I got. You can make a, a messenger only and not have people added to your Facebook because I don't do that. I don't add people to my Facebook. It's yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, but Facebook you can have a messenger and only message people. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, and then just make up a pointed stick messenger or whatever you want. I mean, to my, my my email address. I give you the email address. And, uh, you figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I've got way. his email and text. Oh, okay, so. okay. I don't oh, ever we'll email my friends. Yeah, I mean, like either I'll messenger but, my friend, video chat them, hang out in a private hangout like this. Well, I'm just uh, saying, like, I'm not gonna, you know, throw my throw my phone number out there. No, but, no, um, no, don't throw it in. No. You know? And I mean, I, I I text you guys all the time, so it's like it's easier yeah. just to text message people. Exactly, it is for me too. Yeah. I mean, even even Google Hangouts still works, but yeah, my <laughs> phone's always like. the best way for my friends to get a hold of me is through a text message. Yeah. You know, and then or like if Nick, if I don't reply to his messenger. Then he'll text me, <laughs> yeah. you know, because he knows I'm gonna. So get you my have text. you have Angelica's information, right? I do. Yeah. Oh well, you can give her mine then. That's fine. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Good. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's I no mean, problem. That's yeah. That's easy. So that would that make it easier. I don't want to yeah. do the whole Facebook thing and make Facebook. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I hate Facebook. Um, She's trustworthy. I gave her my entire credit card, my no, ID, yeah. everything to book my entire plans. I was like, you know, Angelica, she's she travels. <laughs> I am not a traveler. <laughs> yeah. And I gave it all over. Like, here you go. Can you just do it? Oh, did you see what uh, LVSA just posted? It said Discord is about page. So I don't know if you use Discord or not. Yeah. I'm, I just I'm started using, using it. Discord. Oh, yeah. I I'm in, how Discord works too good, I, but I it's did great. Discord I just started there. using it. So maybe I'll I'm in a Discord that. with somebody that knows how to do the threads and all that really good. And there's like four of us in there. Yeah. It is awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've never used it. I have to try it. Discord yeah, is a really cool thing. User for games, yeah, I like so Rumble I a lot. Rumble's pretty easy to use. Nice. Yeah. All right, you guys. All right, guys. Get out of here. I'll take you. Guys. Everybody have a good night. Yeah. Thank you. Be safe as always. Uh, we can all hang out again, too. Even if we want to do this privately, we can hit each other up. Yeah, we do watch party on the... Uh, yeah, I'm flexible, so <laughs> you guys just get a hold of me. Because I can always... Uh, okay. Yeah, we can watch. We can hang out and do something, I'm sure. All right, Chris. Yeah. Everybody, thanks for coming around, man. Thank you. So, have yeah. a good night. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. Good night.